Well, hello everybody and a very good afternoon. Welcome to Crafters TV. My name's Ben Mosby. Thanks for joining us for another Crafty Stash show. Um, these are the shows that you guys have been absolutely loving. And I, I kind of feel like to finish off your Friday today, we are going to be bringing you lots of education over the course of this show and indeed Colour Me Happy a little bit later on. Um, so it's kind of over to you really, it, it, particularly in this show, to ask the questions to ask for requests, things that you want to see. The two main things we're going to be concentrating on over the course of this show are your machines. Uh, I know we're going to be looking at the Gemini 2, we're going to be looking at your manual machines as well. So maybe you are thinking about purchasing uh, and you want to know the whys and wherefores, the ins and outs of uh, a particular machine. Ask the questions. If there's something particular that you want to see, again, um, pop in those requests. I can't guarantee we'll be able to do everything, but where we can, we will definitely try for you. Uh, and again, we've got lots of scoreboards on the show for you. Um, so again, if there's something that you want to ask when it comes to scoring, I know we, we kind of covered um, a lot of your hints, tips and techniques when it comes to scoring on Wednesday, but... You know, not everybody watches the whole time. So if you missed out on that show, uh, feel free to fire those questions in. So mainly on scoreboards today, mainly on machines, uh, but fire in the questions and uh, we will get them answered over the course of this two hour show. As I say, it's gonna be more educational, I think, than anything, but what a great couple of hours we're gonna have. Down to you though, as I say, because if you guys don't fire in the questions and the requests, um, I mean, we've got nothing else planned really. So <laughs> it's gonna be, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do uh, for the next couple of hours. So it's the pressure's on you guys, really. You know, normally the pressure's on us to provide the content, but not today. We've been told to wait for the questions and comments to come in. Thank you. <laughs> he knows. Uh, now, it is not, we'll say a few of those in just a, se a second, but it's not just me over the course of the next couple of hours. Oh, no, I am back once again. Uh, <laughs> And they start singing the song then, back once again, like the renegade master. <laughs> uh, no, the last few Friday. Oh, hello. Oh. All right. <laughs> Uh, I, I kind of feel like we've done quite a few Fridays um, together recently and I absolutely love uh, the Fridays when I get to work with uh, TV wifey, the one and only Barnsley Bombshell, Debbie Robinson. How are Yay, you? Yay, I'm absolutely fine. Thank you very much. I keep saying that. I'm trying, I, do you know you try and readjust the new specs? I'm like... Oh, new, new specs. I feel, like I'm, 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 I feel like I'm going a little bit wonky with my new specs. Have you don't know? You don't know? No. I've worked with you, got the new specs on. Ah. So if you see me doing things or saying it's like glass mats are starting to move and things like that it's only because i've not readjusted you need to look in the different places it's the it's the fine beautiful clear yeah. and then it's the moving down yeah. keeping the head yeah. and trying not to do this and this with my eyes because is what i normally do i can't do that because that's when things start to go away ah. however <clears throat> i can't wait for this show I won't, I won't. So excited yeah, because yeah. I love my Gemini. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This morning, a few others did as well because people have been already chucking them in the baskets and snapping, snapping them up. Have so, they? Yeah. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, and I only touched teeny weeny little bit this morning. Um, so, it's going to be more dedicated. But ask those questions. Is there something that you want to see? Going to do intricate dyes, going to do straightforward simple dyes. We've got um, embossing, embossing with stencils. Um, I've got so much planned to show you as well. And that's just the machines. And then we've got all the other things on the show as well. You've so got different wait. materials as well. Got different materials. I've got some proper leather. I've got some multiple fabrics. I've got Essien. I've got uh, craft metal, um, aluminium. Just checking what else I've got down here. I forgot they're all over there. They're not down here. They're all over there. Uh, but I've got lots uh, lined up. But if there's any questions, if, there, if there's something that you want to ask when it comes to terms of pressure, what kind of dyes, what kind of plates you need, combinations you need, um, I'm your girl because I will answer anything you want to ask about the Gemini family mm. that we've got. Um, and any questions well, regarding the pro, somebody had asked earlier about the plates um, for Gemini Junior, Gemini plates, the, the new G2 plates, because you have to try and split them all up now, but it's, it's not confusing, it really isn't. And any question you want to ask, as little or as daft as you think it is, or a silly question, you think it's, it's not such a thing as a silly question, no, ask no. away. Mm. Yeah. That, and that's the point, we mentioned that on the show yesterday, it's like, if not a silly question, if you don't know the answer, it's not a silly question, is it? So ask it. Don't be afraid to ask those questions. Um, and do get in touch. We've got Superstar Susie on the socials uh, this afternoon. Charlotte Bruce already in from a cloudy Tennessee. Uh, howdy, Charlotte. Uh, also, Nancy Peterson says good morning from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, Linda uh, Praheim. I said your surname right. 
Uh, it says, good morning from South Dakota. Uh, Betsy Fruit Black says, good morning from Houston, Texas. Hi, Betsy. Uh, hi also to Tammy Carpenter, who says, good morning. Let's see some fun stuff. This is it. Let's Ooh. see some fun. Eesh. We'll do our best. Uh, hi to Lillian Kwok, who says, hi, Ben, Debbie, CGB team and crafters. We have got Nicola and James steering the good ship craft. Uh, this afternoon. We've got a yay then. Um, Karen is in from Kentucky. Hello. And also hi to uh, Pat Demarest who says good morning from New Jersey. And hi to Sarah Brown who says hi everyone. I'm sorry I missed wake up call. I have my sister Rachel here. Uh, it's now 1am. I'm watching from bed with sand down. Yeah. Spe uh, sending special hugs to delightful Debbie and brilliant Ben. <laughs> <laughs> and the Crafters TV crew and my crafty friends from Melbourne, Australia. Well, it's lovely to have you all in. Keep the comments coming. Fire some questions and requests in, please. Let's put, uh, let's put Debbie to the test today. Let's see if we can catch her out. <laughs> no, 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 let, no, I know we won't. I know we won't because she's a crafting <laughs> oracle. And of course, if anything does go wrong today, we can just blame her glasses. Yes. <laughs> 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 Uh, any, uh, we're not going to be putting up details per se in the show because it is educational, but anything that you do see, um, if it's a two that you want to grab, if it's a mini, if it's a mini, if it's any of the scoreboards that we might see over the course of the show, check out the web, uh, shop the show, shop the day, you'll see all the deals there and you'll be able to pop them into your basket. Right, um, let's get started then. As I say, hopefully we'll, we'll get very interactive over the course of the two hours. Are you going to start off with the G2, Debbie, and perhaps um, give us a bit of a, uh, a bit of a look around and a bit of a, a chat about the G2? Yes. I mean, I know the majority of people know about this machine, right, but there might be people out there who just joined us or don't know about the two. Yeah, absolutely, and I will, I will show you, uh, because it has had a new... Um, Sleek, a sexier look. Oof. It has been brought um, into a more different contemporary. Mm. I'm going to say a contemporary design. It's got yeah. this lovely sleek design to it now, uh, but lots of enhancements in terms of when it comes to the plates, when it comes to the features, um, the optical sensor. I'm going to remember remember first off this morning because I didn't remember it until I was demonstrating it. The optical sensor. How did you know? Oh my God, because it, it was trying to remember everything. Oh uh, yeah. The thing is with this machine is, I can promise you right now, those three Ps that we've talked about in the original machines, so the power, the performance, and the precision cut, are still the same. And I remembered that this time. Did you notice that, Nicola? You um, I remember you the three P earlier, Ps. I forgot one of the Ps earlier. I only did two Ps, not three Ps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> um, I can promise you, the, that is not changed whatsoever. It's gone faster, it's got quieter, so it's a, a difference in that. The, the, the speed of the plates now is quicker, mm -hmm. um, and the sound is uh, a little bit less. So, although you can hear motors on any machines, any yeah. electronic machines, you can hear a motor, regardless. Yeah. It's a little bit quieter, so it purrs now. Uh, now, I oh, know I love that. Now, the other thing as well, and I'll turn it around, I'll start, I'll, in fact, let's start with the bottom. The glide legs. Those lovely, slippy, slidey, little glidey feet yeah. are what make this machine easy to manoeuvre. Yes. Couple of fingers on there, sliding around. If you try doing that with the original, you won't no move chance. it. Not a prayer. Mm. Because it's got sturdy little legs on there that have got like little rubber suckers. Mm. So it means that it stays, stays put. Whereas this is a lovely glide machine. It also has as well that feature where you can actually pop onto the bottom. Uh, you can purchase a separate item which is called the turntable. And the turntable comes with the little turntable mechanic, mechanical part and the screwdriver and the screws to put in. And it's very easy to apply. Question. Yes. Is that just a nice to have or is that a necessity? That's a question from me. Ah, now, good question. Thank so, you. again, I mean, for me personally, um, I prefer it. This is going to sound controversial now. Ooh. I prefer it without it. Oh, okay. I prefer my glide feet because mm. I can move it and I can and twist spin it. And, it. Yeah. Whereas the, the turntable just allows you to turn your machine. So, if you're space saving wise, you don't have a lot of space, that turntable is going to be a godsend for you. I've got a big craft desk, so I'm quite fortunate that I've got a big craft desk. So, I don't need that turntable on. What I need is to be able to glide it around. So, mm. I've actually taken my turntable off. Oh. Okay. So, that, that's just my personal preference. Yeah. But. I know full well the advantages of having that turntable that you can put onto your machine if you don't have that space and you like the you like to be able to access it and turn mm. that around. So it's uh, it's one of those things. So good question, Ben. I like that. Thank you. You fire away those questions. I will. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, now, when we talk about that, so if I turn that around, that's the glide feet. Then we're going to talk about this. 
What's Look that? Look at the back. Oh, the back. Three USB points. Mm. Um, and it, for me, it means in this modern day and age where you've got devices where you want to watch things while mm -hmm. you're on the craft go, or cr cr when, when you're crafting, you when you're on the craft go, that's a new saying, isn't I it? I like it. I like that. I'll take I'm that. always on the craft go. <laughs> 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 that you can actually charge and yes. for me when I'm in the craft room having lots of different ways to charge my mm. phone charge my iPod charge me ch put, put the electric point mm. in now it's all in one and it's simply while you've got your machine on why wouldn't you yeah. so I now always have my iPod I your iPod iPad, 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 iPad. 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 Yep. The iPad mm -hmm. it stays charged all the time because I keep it in there, yeah. and so does my uh, phone. So yeah. it's really nice, and it's lovely that you've got those. And I have heard rumours that there may be some reason why we've got that USB port there. Really? Who knows? Because that's all it is right now. A, a rumour. Yeah. Like Banana Rama. You heard a rumour. Yep. I love that song. Mm. Uh, and then you still got your little flicky on and off switch there. So you. So for me, safety wise, that's really handy to have because if I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to turn it off yeah. and then I don't have to unplug it but I know it's safe because there's no electricity running through there. Mm. Um, of course if you're charging things just make sure that that's switched on. Yeah. Now that's the back end of the feature. Now the other features are the drop down wings. Okay. Ooh, see I'm doing it right now and if I just turn that that way so you can see it this is now your platform this is where your plates go in okay. and come out. Now before in the other machine it didn't have a platform no. so what used to happen was that sometimes especially space saving those used to drop off. Mm. Not anymore, no. so it's absolutely fabulous. But they're not just drop down wings, no. they're actually drawers ah. and they're storage drawers Snack where you tools. can pop things like your tools into there. Magnetic clasp, and that's on both sides. It's just down to you what you're going to fill in there. Yeah. And you can keep them in, you don't have to take them out, you can keep them in, mm -hmm. and then you can close that back up as well. So that's another lovely little feature. The media feature ah. is the drop up or the bring it up of the uh, where you're going to put your um, iPads, your phones mm -hmm. and things like that or tablets and then also you've got and if I just turn this this way again I'm just bring those up you've actually got a little bit of a space there a little extra recess where you can be putting tools into including this one as well yeah. so for me it's a really useful one to have um, and then of course the optical sensor no longer is it two manuals and an optical it's now one optical from start of that mouth all the way through that's that nine inch because this is a nine by twelve platform or the 9x6 platforms like the Gemini jewelry plates will fit into there as well and what I didn't point out this morning if you've got the Gemini Go which is the small machine mm -hmm. the small electric die cutting machine the 3x6 pl plates that you can still get and you can still you know if you've got them they'll go through there as well question go on then I'm gonna keep asking questions and there we have got a few firing in so you know you get you've got the, the new plates with your G2 yes can I use those plates in my Gemini and on the flip side of that if I wanted could I use my original Gemini plate in the GT? Absolutely you can oh. yeah now the optical sensor and we have changed the plates you'll notice the machine we've now got the lovely raspberry color yeah. and you'll notice that the plate so uh, for example the plastic shim no longer is frosty it's uh, clear mm -hmm. uh, obviously just slightly frosty but you can see everything through there hi um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it is <laughs> Hello! It's yeah. you can see it you. is ten times stronger! Yeah. For me, mm. the biggest game changer mm -hmm. of all. For me, that was the one plate that I used to buy the most of. Ten times. This is These are my own personal plates that I brought mm. from home, uh, Ben. Um, and literally ten times stronger that you'll get out of that. And then no longer are the clear cutting plates, they're now white. And I say white, off-white. Mm. Off-white colour, uh, but that's for the optical sensor to pick it up. However, your question is a brilliant question in terms of your uh, clear plates. Mm -hmm. Every one of your older Gemini plates. So if you've got, now like myself, I've got a few extras that I've got. And I don't use my old machine anymore, I use the new one. But they still go through there. They go through there absolutely perfectly. The only thing that you need to remember is that the optical sensor needs to pick up. So it's got to, it's got like a light beam that goes across it that picks up that optical sensor yeah. picks up. So it needs to recognise. For me, because I cut everything face down and I have a magnetic shim, my magnetic shim covers that all that covers that straight away. Mm. So for me, that's absolutely perfect, and they do go through. And these new plates go through your originals and they go through your pro as well because somebody asked it earlier for anybody who didn't watch that earlier show the Gemini Pro is a 12 inch opening so the mm. mouth is 12 inch these are 9 by 12 and so straight away you just turn it that way and you're popping it into your pro so if you want to get some of these plates for your pro absolutely 
you know, you can do that because they work, we'll work with them as well. So that's a very good question. Another question? Yeah. Are we all right to just... Um, you can fire away these questions as much as you want. Okay, so this is from Rhonda. Yeah. So, uh, talking about plates, that's why I ask it now. Yeah. Warpage. So if we're experiencing a bit of warpage, which Rhonda is, uh, how can we extend the life of our plates? Is there a technique we can do? Well, are you, um, I'm just going to say, Rhonda, you're still doing some flipping and rotating. We will still say, despite the fact that we say these are three times stronger mm -hmm. and the plastic shim is... I'm doing it, but the plastic shim, we're going to call it that, that's what it is. The plastic shim is ten times stronger. Yeah. Uh, you still need to do the flip and rotate. You mm. need to still keep that in mind. That's with anybody's machine, whether it be manual or not. You still need to do the flip and rotate. Um, if you are using your machine and you're getting some warping, I will say it'll probably be down to the pressure. And it could be down to the die that you're using, the platforms that you're using, or the shims, as we call these. We refer to them as plates, but we refer to them when we're talking technically. Yeah. We refer to them as a shim. And so it's down to your pressure and I'm going to try and talk you through that throughout this, these next two hours about thinking about that pressure, thinking about the die, looking at the die, looking at the intricacy, whether or not it needs all the, plat you know, the platforms that we would recommend because we do have that instruction booklet, but it's always about the recommendation and it's like with anything, going back to the early years when the original launched, it's about getting to know your machine. Mm -hmm. It's about learning the dies, learning the materials that you're cutting through. And hopefully I'm going to talk you through all of those um, with that. So Rhonda, if you're still getting that, make sure you flip and rotate, mm -hmm. but also look at the die, look at the things that you're cutting, and um, hopefully we'll be able to sort that out. I always say my inbox is open 24 seven. It might take me a while to get round them and because there's always lots of messages coming through. It might take me a couple of days or if I've been away a couple of weeks, sorry for those people that left message me when I went away. Uh, but- She's on holiday, everybody. I do. I I, do, I know. Can Even you Debbie needs to take still time there, off. Just, still, still there just a little bit. Uh, but I will always answer any questions and I've addressed many things for lots of customers over the years about our plates and how to prevent that warpage. And people have come back to me and said thank you because it's just about knowing about your machine. Mm. You will get longevity out of your plates if you look after it and look after it and think about what you're doing in terms of dies, the types of dies, the multimedia dies, the, sh the shims that you're putting in there. So think about that. That's all I'm going to say. So hopefully Rhonda, if you're watching, um, some of these things might help you in terms of the warpage mm -hmm. because it, this now shouldn't be happening. Okay, mm. yeah. Um, we have a few other questions come through, but those are to do with things which I think we'll probably come on to in a bit. One about the MIDI, one about the sparkle pens. So uh, we will tackle those in just a little bit. Any more um, sparkle pens is later on, but I, I will, we'll answer it in a bit. We'll answer it in the show. Yeah. Don't you worry, Candy, we'll answer. Uh, but let's get back to the two then. So um, are we going to have a little bit of a uh, run through? I think we are. Of some yes. Items through the machine. So I think the good news is, is that um, Debbie has got um, some different dyes and different materials to show you. So I think it's a it's a, it's a good thing to show, isn't it? Because it will show the Gemini 2, I think, in a great light, cutting through all these different materials. But also, um, it will kind of give everyone a bit of a refresher as, what, as to what we need to do, what plate combinations. Yeah. Mm. And what I'm going to try and do is do it in coloured paper so you can get to see things a little bit more clearly. Sometimes when we're die cutting, we do it in whites mm. and it's sometimes a little bit tricky to see. Uh, but I'm going to talk about, because I went, jump this morning I jumped straight into an intricate die. I'm not going to do that. I want to talk you through your machine and I want to talk you through how you can use your plates and your platforms. And um, this about the getting to know your machine bit is what I want you to bear in mind. Now, in your instruction booklet, it will always, always tell you to work from your cutting plate down. So if I put that there, the cutting plate down with your plastic shim and uh, your magnetic shim because the magnetic is magnetic on both sides uh -huh. on here you've got your uh, your uh, sizes of cards you've got us sizes as well as uk sizes on there so for instance an eight by eight that's an eight by eight card stock you can actually place your die into the center so that you can cut that out perfectly um, so those kind of things are really helpful uh, but you've got your grid on the other side and it's magnetic on both sides now this is how it would tell you to use it and then put your dies down into place so that it holds it into place. Yeah. But these kind of dies don't need the magnetic shimming. Oh. So that's why I wanted to show you um, about getting to know your machine and um, uh, all those different things. So I always cut into the... Please excuse my plates, they're filthy. I do apologise. Well um, loved. 
<laughs> cut into um, the cutting into the plate. So I do it the other way around. Um, so I'm just going to pop, for instance, this down. Now I've taken one of the. I've just pinched these from side of uh, of me on the on the. Um, the crafter's desk as we call it um, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that so I'm going to place them down now the only difference there Ben is, is of course there's no magnet to hold it in place so you're going to you're going to pop some tape down and you're going to hold it into place that way um, and I'm just going to run that down to hold the whole die so it doesn't move Debbie that's a bit silly look at me look how much I've put on there that's a lot for goodness that. sake I'm getting myself what all twisted what up what you as well. like I know what am I like so I'm just going to pop that down and that's the only difference that it'll make is when you're doing this um, and then again well, let's pop a couple of the ones on there as well see if I can get a couple on and now these are really straightforward dies there's a teeny weeny bit of ring and I say intricacy so more of a um, not heavily patterned yeah because what I'm going to be showing you in a second is heavily patterned um, so that there in itself is just straightforward dies I think I might chance it with those oh no you're not no you're not power performance I've just talked about them do not be daft Debbie because uh, nine times out of ten uh, the power performance and precision will precision. move that yes <laughs> now you would think because normally in the booklet it would tell you to put your magnetic shim no we're not going to do that we're going to show you uh, just by using your cutting plates you can see I love my cutting plates they well cut mixed media dies on oh, there yeah. as well that's one mm -hmm. of the largest jigsaw ones oh, okay yeah so you can do this uh, and I will talk about multimedia in a second now I'm just going to bring this round a second I talked about it this morning sometimes you can get what we call dog-eared plates uh, because they've gone through the rollers mm. at an angle and they've not been put in flushly 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 flush, flush. just flush just I like flush. flushly so make sure when you put in them in they go in flush <laughs> because flushly 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 the real Barnsley accent came out I love didn't it. it didn't it yes mm -hmm. uh, now when I take these out and this is what I say about getting to know your machine if it hasn't cut it through you can always add your shim in uh, okay but for me and I'm just make sure I've got my pokey tool because we all know the power of that Gemini can then turn low tack tape into something absolutely super 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 strong um, but look it's cut through doors perfectly and there was no magnetic shim involved whatsoever including down to and this is this is because the straightforward dies there's not a lot of intricacy yeah they are a simple straightforward pattern but it's cut through those absolutely perfectly and what it's not done it's not marked me card no and that's why I've chosen this because another question that I get asked loads is how can I prevent marking on my card like Centura Pearl like satin card like glitter uh, not glitter um high shine mirror yeah, mirror card, there's yeah. no marks on there because there wasn't that pressure that was added in if i had used that in there as well I can guaranteed i would have struggled to get my tape off and mm -hmm. not only that i would have probably marked the cardstock with other cuts that you've had into your plates so that's always something to bear in mind when you're doing that so i hope that addressed that little prob uh, problem uh, that little thing there when it comes to uh, what we call a straightforward die it's cut them beautifully it's cut them cleanly it's not marked the cardstock this this is a tech, like I said, texture cardstock, but it's a, a really beautiful cardstock that you don't want to get marked. Yeah, Does exactly that make right. sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. But coming to the next stage, is that when we're going to move on to? And I'm just going to push those there for a second. Is we're going to talk about the intricate dies. Now, Ooh. in your intricate dies, wow. and I use this all the time, it's one of my favourite dies, but it's yeah. one of those that's got hundreds of cutting points going all the way across, Loads. hundreds of cutting points all the way down there. It's got some embossed detail on there as well. Um, it's a, I think it's about five and a half by five and a half, this, or uh -huh. five by five. I can never remember the size. Five by five. Uh, one of our original Critter cards from about six, seven years ago, this. Wow. So it's a long time, but I still use it to this day, and it's a really good one to demonstrate how to use them. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the bit of the reversal now so that I can show you when you want to cut something in yeah. and you want to place it into... So what have I cut this card stock? Let's have a little look. I think I might have cut this to six by six. Yes, I did. So six by six. Let's have a look for our six by six. So we've got six by six so I'm going to place my die into the I'm going to call it the center should we call it the center mm -hmm. see the six by six grid yeah so I'm going to line that up and then I know that that fits perfectly and then I'm going to pop this in now because we've talked about this but we never really demonstrate it so I thought I might as well show you so the six by six now goes over there now power performance precision cut is going to be going to come available however 
this might move oh yeah you and it might that. move off your six by six and if you're doing it into a six by six cardstock and you don't want it to move yeah. do you know what you're going to do what you do tape tape it tape it down yeah. yeah, just tape it down. That's all you need to do. I think that looks about right. I don't think I've moved it anywhere near there. I think tapes, I mean, as you know, I mean, I, I do a little bit of crafting. When I do, I use the yeah. MIDI. That's kind of what I like to do. But I think when I move on to electronic machine, I think I'll be taping every time because I, I don't think I'd want to take that risk of a die slipping to be yeah. honest with you. Well, it's not so much this time that the die will slip because the die is on the magnetic yeah, sheet. The so the shim's there mm. and it's holding that die. That die's not going anywhere. It's the cardstock yeah. that will move and it will move. This is a really powerful machine. Mm. We're talking to cut those intricate dies, to cut the multimedia dies, to cut the different materials. We need that power and performance every single time and that's what you get with this machine. Now, I'm just going to show you now. Normally, with an intricate die that's got hundreds of cutting points, you would put the metal shim in. In. This is what I talk about getting to know your machine. If I didn't put this in, I know for a fact that that wouldn't cut because there's such a lot of intricacy in there. But I don't need to add the metal shim. So I'm going to show you, and again, this is another good example of when you're popping things in. It doesn't matter where you put this die, wherever you put that die in the machine, it'll not fail. So, nice flush plates again, we're going to feed it through the machine, but this time we're doing it in the method of how the book would tell you to use that. Did you hear the change? Quite, quite, still quiet, still faster. Whisper quiet. Whisper quiet. You can pause it at any time oh, as yeah. well, mm -hmm. and you can reverse that so you could do a double cut, or you could just press that to resume it. And Debbie, don't you dare say it's gone past, you silly devil. Let me just kick start that back in. Yeah, there we go. Oh, no. You can bring that back through again. Not at <laughs> it would help to press the right button. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, Debbie, you pressed the reverse. You meant to be pressing the play and the pause. <laughs> oh, dear. Do you know you can tell it's going to be one of those afternoons? <laughs> Now, it's cut through absolutely beautifully. What I'm going to show you as well is that, can you see? Nothing. Mm. That's a really intricate die. Yeah. There's no warpage because do you know why? I flip and rotate my plates. Yeah, okay. I still do it. Yeah. I still do this. And this is why I've brought my own plates in. Now, this is die cut beautifully. James, I'm going to challenge you to come in a bit close Whoa, like I did with Sam James. this morning. Yeah, it's a challenge, James, right now because I want you to come in close. And you can see all the areas that have been die cut out. Some of them you can even knock out. Uh, knock out? Um, actually, that. thank you, James. That shows that off beautifully. I'll turn Look it that way so you that. can see it. That shows just how fantastic that's cut yeah. out. Some have already released. That, uh, that's what they've done. Uh, but what you've got there is um, this method of doing it this way. However, I'm not going to bother about too, worry too much about that with peeling it off. And on the, it's on the other side. It's not on the side that's going to do any damage, so it's okay. Um, now, embossing. There's a nice little emboss feature. But I, I did it this morning, um, Ben, but I'm yeah. just going to talk about it this time. You would still keep those two plates there, but you would take off your die and pop it that way and then the rubber shim will go over the top and then you'll emboss the detail oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay so you're going to emboss that detail into there and people often say to me but aren't you going to damage your rubber embossing mat but you're not you promise you you won't you will not damage anything all it's doing is embossing the emboss features of a die into there um, you can do that if you want to because the power of the Gemini will of course have already done a little bit of that but it won't give you that extra oomph. Mm. I call about it the extra oomph yes. but it won't because um, it literally, I'm just going to knock, knock this out of the die. Bear with me a second. Oh I've got a bit of cleaning to do tonight. Let me tell you. You what? I've got a bit of cleaning to do tonight. <laughs> There's all sorts on the bottom here. <laughs> but can, can we come in close James? Thank you. That was a six by six cardstock. The die's yeah. perfectly placed into the center because I've used my grid, I've used my magnetic yeah. shim. Um, and then of course, you've got all this lovely embossed detail on the flower, on the butterfly wings, and then all that lovely die cut out there as well. That's amazing. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And that's just one way. So I want to show you slightly different to what I did this morning. But if you were cutting in, that's why, you were, that's why you'll use your magnetic shims. You've got the grids on there, use them um, if you want to do that, because it means, especially when you're making something, you then don't have to chop it down to size because it's already been cut to size and the die's in the right place that it needs to be. Yeah. So absolutely spot on. Love that. Um, absolutely brilliant. Uh, thank you as well for all the um, hellos and comments still coming through. Just say a few more hellos. Don't um, 
be afraid to ask questions. That's what this show is all about. Feel free to, uh, to fire those in. Uh, hi to Evelyn, who's joined us from Colorado. Uh, hi also to Lynn Morton, who says, good afternoon, Debbie, Ben, Team Social, and all the Suit TV team from Newcastle. Uh, hi also to Lois, who says, good morning, everyone, from the place that is shaped like a tractor. Uh, and Tommy Bauck says, good uh, Friday to everyone from Western South Dakota. Also, um, just whilst we are... Um, sort of getting ready for the next uh, demonstration. Anything that you want to see, let us know. Uh, also, just a quick thank you to everybody who has um, sort of been bearing with us over the course of the last few days uh, when it comes to our um, website. Obviously, you know, uh, we might not know. We've got the, our new website, which is up and running. I know a few people have been experiencing a, um, a few technical issues with it. Uh, we are, of course, aware of those problems. We're doing our very best to get those fixed as well. Um, and I know the team have been working super duper hard behind the scenes to get those fixed. If you, um, if you do get onto the website, now, you should now see all of your points and your membership level as soon as you log in online. So if you kind of you know, thought, oh, I'll leave it for a few days, if you go in now, you should be able to see that. Uh, and also worth bearing in mind, for those of you that are shopping and then you're going, wow, I'm not seeing my, I'm not seeing my discount now. Um, once you get through to the checkout area of the website, that is where you will see your discount applied if you are within Club Inspire. So um, a few little changes, if you like, and I think, you know, it's going to be one of those things which will probably take a little bit of time to get used to, but I think once you're used to it, uh, the whole experience on the website is going to be a um, much more positive experience for you, uh, and it's going to be a lot easier to navigate uh, with lots of uh, big things coming, as you will know. Uh, I really do think the website is going to come into its own, but a big thank you for your patience um, and a, uh, a, a massive thank you, as I say, for all of your patience, and we are here to help, of course. Right, right. Uh, hi to Candy, who's joined us, saying good morning from Portland, Oregon. Uh, time for another awesome show. Oh, yeah, we've already done half an hour of awesomeness, uh, Candy. Already half an hour of awesomeness has gone by. Um, the questions are coming in, which is nice. Any more, fire them in. Anything to do with the G2, we want to know. Anything to do with the Mini, the MIDI, any of the scoreboards. And then we've got questions coming in about sparkle pens as well. We've got a Colour Me Happy show coming up for you uh, a little bit later on this evening. So if you want to ask questions now ahead of that time, we'll answer the questions fire them in come on it's interactive that's what craft your stash is all about getting those questions answered um so let us get back to debbie are we sticking with the two for now we stick with the g2 for now okay. because um this would apply to your gemini junior mm -hmm. to your gemini pro and to your gemini 2 and to your originals as yeah. well um so i'm going to move on to the embossing so we talk about it as being a die cutting i've done straightforward dies I've done um i've done for a, an intricate one and um, embossed with that as well. The difference that we get here, which is still still can cause some confusion, <coughs> excuse me, Spam, because I've got a terrible tickle again. Oh. Um, is embossing a die yeah. is not to be this is not to be confused with embossing with embossing folders, folders because yes. folders are different. And I've got different ones here. I've got a 2D, I've got a 3D, <coughs> I've got a stencil. I'm going to show you how to emboss with a stencil, and then different materials that you can emboss with as well. And you'll see us do this quite a few times. So I'm going to move on to that. I just need a quick little wet the no whistle, worries. so to speak, just for a second, Ben, just because I've got this little terrible tickle, I just need to get rid of it for a second. That's it. Uh, wet your whistle, get rid of the tickle. Uh, but again, hopefully, uh, we will cover off everything that you need to know as far as the machines are concerned. Certainly going to spend a bit more time with the Gemini 2. Uh, if there's something that we don't cover that you need an answer to, ask it. And also worth bearing in mind, whilst this is one of those sort of educational shows, we're not going to pop up like our usual details on the screen because you want to see uh, all of the demonstrations but if you do want to buy anything that we're showing you the G2 is available on the website uh, the mini and the midi coming up later on all the scoreboards uh, and indeed everything that you're going to see later on in uh, color me happy just head to the shop the show or shop the day page and you will be able to pick up all of those deals right let us uh, go back she's wet her whistle and uh, <laughs> Debbie is ready to go <laughs> yeah thank you it's just some tablets I'm on that it's like causing a little bit of a tickle oh. so just trying to get rid of the tickle um, right <clears throat> Tickle aside, <laughs> uh, we're going to do embossing. <laughs> we're going to do embossing, and we're going to talk about the differences between regular to 3D, the different platforms that you need, mm -hmm. and also things that you can do with many of your stencils that you've got in your collection, yeah. and also different materials that you can emboss with as well. And when I say materials, lots of other materials mm. as well. Um, now. I'm going to talk about, first of all, standard, regular embossing folder, but I'm going to hold them up so that you can see side by side the difference. Yeah. Straight away, this, the difference is, the physical difference is, this is thinner than this one. And you can see that the plastic is thicker because there's more moulding, more sculpturing, and more depth when it comes to a 3D folder. So, 2D, regular 2D, 
And usually, most companies, including ourselves, will tell you if it's if it's a 3D, it'll be marked on clearly on the packaging. Okay. If it's a regular, it won't have anything. It won't say anything. It'll just be a regular embossing folder. What's the question? Oh, go, go away then. <laughs> so if it, if it wasn't marked on there, yeah. is it easy to feel the difference between a 2D and a 3D, it's or how would you tell? It's extremely easy to feel the difference. That's a very good question. Absolutely. Come here. Oh, come here. Like, oh. I'm going to have you feeling it. You get over here and come and... Right. Come and get a feel. <laughs> Come and get a feel. There you go. There's, a, there's an invitation there's you get every day. There's all my dreams all in Whoa, one go. Whoa, what a Friday as well, Demi. What are you like? It's a Friday feeling. Ooh, it <laughs> <laughs> Who's that <laughs> They shouldn't let us work together. Know, they shouldn't. I know. That'll be it now, me and you, for about six weeks. That's you it watch. now. Have a feel, because you can feel the difference between a regular. Mm. Now, this is a regular folder. Can you feel that one first for me? Oh, I've already felt that one now. I know you did. Oh. <laughs> feel the regular one first. Well, I can feel the difference already. I can. I've got a thousand degrees hot in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I... Now, you can feel. That's just one level of embossing mm -hmm. detail. So it's only like a one sculpture. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you get your fingers and you can feel the Pinks difference. And troughs. Yes. Oh yeah, you that's can. The you, you, yeah, your, your fingers really dip into the. They do, areas here. and that's with any 3D folder mm. and and any regular folder. So you can feel a difference. It's very easy to to differentiate between the two mm. if it doesn't clearly mark it on the packaging. Yeah. And like I said, ours we do clearly mark it for you, uh, but other companies may not. I'm not that's sure. That's a 3D. That yeah, one. definitely. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I feel far right now. That was great. There we go. I enjoyed that. That Friday feeling new feature here <laughs> on Crafters TV. I'm always up for that one. Oh, oh, tell oh, me, my. tell me, producer Nick and uh, James, is Jenny still in the office? <laughs> oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> I was just thinking because they're in there with yeah. her. <laughs> Our head of TV is using the same office. You can imagine. I think we'd have soon known about that if she was. <laughs> right. <laughs> there we go. Regular embossing folder. It will be just your two. And if it's a regular plates that you've got, it'll be your two clear cutting plates, or now, as we refer to them, the two white plates, and that's your cutting plates. They are the only ones that you need for embossing. You do not put any other things in. You do not put the rubber embossing mat in there. And I know it sounds daft, but people do, because they hear the word embossing, mm -hmm. and they think they need to put that in there. Mm. So no, it's just the fact is the plates, the sandwiches, the shims, whichever way you're here is reference it, that's all you need. The lovely thing about the G2, the optical sensor is straight across from the top to the bottom. So it means now for you, you do not have to turn this anymore. That way you can just run it in straight into your machine. Let those sensors pick that up and then it does the business for you. Simple, easy, straightforward. The technology is the edge to edge from start to finish. And it literally is the most beautiful embossing. Oh, wow. And I mean beautiful yeah, embossing. Yeah. And I've used satin cards so you can see it really works really, really well. Mm -hmm. A very old embossing folder. It's so old, it came with my original Gemini as a starter kit. Did it? Back in the day, yeah, when it was a purple shim. Uh, but beautiful embossing all the way around. And you can see as well, um, <clears throat> do you know what we talk about with, um, sometimes people get warpage mm -hmm. in their cardstock when they're embossing. Um, it's down to the fact of, this is a five by seven, whatever size your embossing folder is, take a quarter of an inch off your cardstock. Oh, okay. And you won't get any of it. You can see that's as flat as a die. Oh, is it because it's squeezed into the folder then, is yeah, it? Yeah, if it's in the folder and there's no overhang, mm. it doesn't mean that anything can get rippled, which is what will happen. So yeah. that's another good uh, little tip there nice for tip. you. 3D, I've yeah. taken another um, um, beautiful uh, satin, I call it. Yeah. Um, when you're embossing and you want the embossed side, if you've got a pattern cast up that's only got it on one side, you're feeling for the raised side. <clears throat> More often than not, you can't tell the difference. I normally mark it with an E and a D for emboss and deboss. Oh, okay. So at home, mine have got that on there. Mm. Um, I don't do it for these because that, well, obviously we're showing them off. And we still get, you still can get these. Um, so again, I've just trimmed it down to a quarter of an inch and popping that in. Mm -hmm into that platform but now we're changing this platform so we're just taking one of the um cutting plates yeah and then we're bringing in the magnetic shim and the plastic shim on the top and that's the combination for any 3d folder and you're running that through and again all you're going to do is make sure the sensor picks it up let it go and it does it for you no hand cranking no effort is involved it's so quick and have you noticed how quick? Mm. That would have took a little bit longer on the other machine. Yeah. Uh, not anymore. And then again, 
<laughs> the embossed Hello. detail is uh, seriously absolutely gorgeous it really really is what a what a beautiful emboss that mm. is um, and that's the difference between a 2d to a 3d and the combination that you need i'm just going to quickly show you how to emboss oh with the stencil, a stencil. yeah is so, that with all stencils as well? Any stencil? Yeah. Yeah, any stencil. Now I have to think about this one, Ben, so just give me a second. Okay. Yeah. Cutting plate. Mm -hmm. in stencil. Yeah. I've now took a high shine mirror because I want to really show this off. So because this is not an embossing folder, it's a stencil. No. However, I'm going to turn it that way. So whatever you do here, the emboss is going to be much more faint, isn't it? Well, you say that. Oh. <clears throat> you say that. But we have got the power of the Gemini. So okay. what I'm just going to do is make sure my cardstock doesn't move. So I'm just going to pop that at the top. Just a little teeny bit, a bit of raw tack tape. This is when your rubber embossing mat oh. will come in to an embossing feature, just with a stencil only. Not with a, not with a plastic folder. But when you want to emboss a stencil, you want, that, so you want that pressure to go somewhere. So it mm. goes into there. And then, of course... And again, <clears throat> don't want you getting too confused. We're not using the magnetic. We're just popping in plastic mm -hmm. and the other cutting onto the top and running that through. Now, if my memory serves me correctly, <clears throat> that's the platform. <laughs> well, we're about to find out if, if it has or not. <laughs> it's one of those because you don't do it that often. And I don't know why I don't do it that often, um, but it's one of those reasons why um, <clears throat> you forget. And I, I sometimes have it wrote down somewhere. And do you know what? There's no wrong with that. No. Why not? Yeah, it's done that absolutely perfectly. And then if I peel oh, that off. I never thought it would emboss as much as that. Yeah. That's and that, incredible. that just shows you what you can do with a stencil. Mm. And it's got all oh, that lovely embossed detail. And I know it's on the high shine mirror. You can do that with satin. You can do it with Centura Pearl. Um, you can do it with any cardstock or any paper to be that matter. Yeah. Um, and then, honestly, that turns all your stencils now into a lovely embossing fold. So we've done 2D, we've done 3D, and we've done a stencil, all in the combinations and the mm -hmm. plate combinations. Save this show. Um, you can see how to work it and the pl platforms that you need. Or write notes and have it at the side of you. So if yeah. you forget, you can go to your little notebook. And I've got a notebook at the side of my machine, because sometimes I forget. Yeah. And I've used it for years, and I still sometimes forget. Um, so those are the kind of things that you can be doing in terms of embossing. And then one last little one that I love to do is that you can emboss different materials as well. So still the same features. The machine's very clever. If you've got a platform that's not right, sometimes it won't take it through. It'll stop. It'll spit it back out. Mm -hmm. It's happened to me, so I know that it, that, that feature is still in there. Um, and it's always thinking about what you're embossing and the materials that you're embossing. And you'll have seen us do this before with tissue paper. It looks absolutely exquisite when you use tissue paper. Yeah. I'm just going to fold it up. I would have normally cut it down to size a little bit, so I would have probably trimmed a little bit off the bottom. But it's just to show you the kind of thing that you can be doing. How many layers is that? There? About eight layers? Do you know, I would just, I would just try and hazard a guess, and oh. I don't know because I've just pulled it out of me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm. And then I'm toggling it up. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh. Quite a lot there, Ben. Quite, quite a, lot. a lot. Yeah, quite a lot. But we'll see and we'll give it a go. Obviously, tissue paper is not the same consistency as it is with um, with cardstock, mm. but you can still emboss it. Just trim that off at the bottom. Yeah. You'll be fine. You'll be absolutely fine. Um, but it's a 3D folder. So, again, this is when you would think. Now, we did say with 3D, you put your, this shim in and this shim. Mm. However, can I just turn this round a second? Be very careful. Well, that's, yeah. Because this is a really big shim yeah. now. And for example, if I was to put that through a machine, potentially spit it back out. Yeah. Um, so I would try it without and then just go in with the plastic shim over the top and run that through. And again, if it's too much, it just means it's just that little bit too thick. But I can hear that working fine. Yeah. I don't think there's been a problem there. Uh, oh, actually, do you know what? I probably could have put that in there. Sure. Yeah, let me have a look. No. Nope. Oh, you're going to yeah. go again? Yeah, shall we go again? Well, actually, you can run it through again twice, or you could put another shim in. Okay. I will, I will do it. Let me go just on. do it. Let's just put it What's the worst in. that could happen? It's a bit back out. Yeah. It'll spit it back out. Now, you can hear the work. Can oh, you yeah. hear the working of it? Absolutely different sound. Still quiet. It's still quiet, but you can hear the extra thing that it's doing. a bit lower, didn't it? Yes. Ooh. It's because it's going through there. Oh. It was. <laughs> Rather than, it was saying, oh my God, what are you doing to me? Please stop. Please stop. 
please stop. <laughs> I've done enough. What are you doing to me, woman? Can you just stop now with adding all these extra bits in? But seriously, that's go. just turned in to the more beautiful uh, tissue paper. Yeah. And again, I've got... How far on? How far on? Let's have a little look. And I'm still going on. <laughs> turned it into a really beautiful Pretty. pattern yeah. um, lovely tissue paper that's got just adds a little bit of something different to it doesn't it and it looks lovely it really does makes a difference when you're doing those finishing touches do you know your acetate boxes and things like oh, that yeah, yeah. having something that's embossed just makes it that little bit more luxurious and um, so that's just a different material that you can use as well then blooming marvelous um, I've got craft stuff on the table says Maggie Fielding but I've not done anything as I am mesmerized I always get mesmerized by these shows and I think that they are brilliant if you are new particularly um, Amazing, but I think for everybody, they're always good as like little refreshers, aren't they? These shows. Uh, wow, says Roseanne Baker. Good to know about the stencil emboss trick. I love it. Yeah, again, I think it's because we have so many uh, different great embossing folders. Perhaps it's something that we don't kind of focus on too much when it comes to stencils, because you've already got like a wide range of different embossing folders that you can use to create an emboss. So you probably think, well, why would I use a stencil? But great to know that you can. Uh, Rosalind says the tissue paper embossing really enhances a gift bag or regular gift. I've had people ask where I got the tissue paper. Uh, and Laurel Enos says, thank you, thank you, thank you. This show is a must for everyone using a machine. Uh, you are welcome, everybody. Uh, Pat says, love watching the shows. I never thought of embossing a stencil. What a wonderful idea. Um, and, and this is the thing as well. You know, it's brilliant that if you are just watching this show, you, you know, even if you're not thinking about buying anything today, as long as you're going away with new ideas and kind of new concepts in your head, I feel like we've done our job. Now, there's questions coming through, some sort of generic ones which we'll tackle very shortly, and also a few questions uh, which are pertaining to the Gemini MIDI, which I know we'll come on to uh, in just a little while as well. So keep those coming in. We'll do some questions the other side of this short break, and um, also when we move on to the, the, the MIDI and, and then the Mini, we will ask Debbie those questions as we go. But listen, if you want to pick up anything from this show, uh, feel Feel free to, it is all there for you on the uh, Shop the Day page. Um, and whilst potentially you are checking it out, we'll get ready for some more demonstrations. And here is some important information from a very important man. Hi, I'm Ben from Crafters TV. As you may know, we've just launched an amazing new website, our new home of Papercraft to house all of your crafty needs. And as we've had a bit of a makeover, I'm here today to help you log into your account on our brand new site. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Go to the Crafters Companion homepage. Make sure to select the correct location at the top of the page. Go to the My Crafters icon on the top right of your screen. Next, enter your email address. Then, enter your password. Click the Sign In button. You should now be logged into your account and taken to your My Crafters page. When you're ready to log out, go to the left-hand side of the page and click the Log Out button in the My Account box. When you're logged out, you'll be taken back to the Crafters Companion page. And it's as easy as that. Here at Crafters TV, it couldn't be easier to get social with us. Whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, on your TV or tablet, you can get so close to the action, it's like you're in the studio with us. You can ask questions about products or crafty techniques, Get hints and tips from our expert demonstrators. Plus, share pictures of your crafty makes with our amazing community. Crafters TV, getting you closer to the crafty action. Hi, I'm Ben from Crafters TV. As you may know, we've just launched an amazing new website, our new home of paper craft to house all of your crafty needs. And as we've had a bit of a makeover, I'm here today to give you a bit of a refresher on how to reset your password. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. First, go to the Crafters Companion homepage. Next, make sure that you've selected the correct location. Go to the My Crafters icon. Click Forgotten Your Password. Enter the email address linked to your account in the box and then click Reset My Password. Next, Head over to your email inbox where you should have received an email with a link to reset your password. Click the reset your password link on your email. Type a brand new password in the password box. Enter it again in the password confirmation box. Click reset my password. 
You will then be logged into your account and taken to your My Crafters page where you can explore the new home of Papercraft. We're switching on the spotlight and turning up the sparkle because our amazing 18th birthday is nearly here. We're going all out this year to light up the dance floor for our biggest and brightest party ever. Oh, and best of all, everyone's on the guest list. So join us from the 9th to the 22nd of October to dance so busy. And we're really spoiling you this year. We've got more glitter than a disco ball. So get ready for a dazzling lineup of fantastic craft launches and so many fabulous crafty treats and surprises. Crafters, this is your time to shine. Head across to our new Crafters Companion website where you can have a look at our birthday booklet for all of our incredible deals. Eighteenth birthday? Is that you? Nobody told me about that. When's that happening then? <laughs> what? What? Next week, hey, hey, hey. Have you seen the booklet? See the booklet? The booklet. Go on the, uh, well, scroll down a bit from where you're watching now. It's on the Facebook page, seen it? Well, I think a lot of us have shared it as well. You have a sneaky peek as what's coming up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> um, we have got two weeks of uh, amazing product launches, amazing deals. I won't say too much more, but you know, free gifts maybe. Maybe some extra points flying around. That kind of thing. Competitions to win prizes. New song as well. Just seen the video for that. Sam filmed it the other day. Oh, hopefully you're going to love it. It's fun. But it's all coming up next week. So um, do make sure you're with us. I know you will be. Um, thank you for the questions, everybody. Um, right. We've got some MIDI questions coming up. So we'll do those in a minute because we're going to move on to the MIDI in just a few moments time. But two questions which are sort of generic, which we'll tackle. I know Debbie wants to show you a little bit more with the Gemini 2. So a question from Candy, Debbie, who says, um, can you use the glitter sparkle pens to stamp? Yes, you can. Actually, you must have read my mind because later on we are going to do some of that as well because we've got okay. more techniques to do. We only covered little, little bits this morning. We're going to do stamping with uh, your tricolour aquas and stamping with your um, sparkle pens. Yeah. Yeah. That's coming your way later on Colour Me Happy. And then Lynn Morton says, so what is an embossing die and its purpose, please? Oh, that was a good question. What have I done with it? What? I put it down the die. What oh. have I done with it? What have you done with it? The, my, my die. The, oh, de, 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 I've got it. Oh. Put it down there. It's an extra decoration. Yeah. It's 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 a die cut element. I'll, I'll tell you a really good example. There's lots of machines out in the market that just do electronic cutting. And you, you know the ones with me. You know our Craig right into his, can I say it? Cricket. Is it just uh, cricket? Yeah, it's cricket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah doesn't offer the same as a metal die does. So it will cut out lots of lovely things, lots of lovely fabrics and things like that. Ah, absolutely, but it doesn't give you that 3D feel, that extra little detail. Mm. That's what an, a die cut will do that's got an embossed feature to it. So it creates a little bit more depth and a little bit more sculpture to it um, and really brings things to life, like your flowers, like your petals, all those kind of things. That it will, it will bring them to life. So for me, it's lovely that we have those. It's not every die. There's lots of die out there that don't have them. Um, edibles, we mm -hmm. have lots of edibles that have got both, some with embossed details, some without, uh, but it just gives it that extra, it takes, it elevates it from a flat cut to a, a more detailed cut and that's why I personally think every die should have an embossed feature to it because it just brings them to life a little bit more than what you would get with a, a standard electronic machine that just cuts flat images out. If you, do you get me when I say mm -hmm. that? Yeah. So there. I, I did say that was a final question, but one more question before we see more with the two. Sorry, Stephanie. No, this is a, another generic one. Well, it's not generic, it's a question, but you, oh, you'll see. Stephanie says, does it help to spritz multi-purpose cardstock with water or something else to bring out more of the embossing pattern? So spritzing, does that help to get a better emboss, Debbie? Um, I'll probably be controversial when I say this. Oh. I don't. And I wouldn't. And what? I'm sorry. I know this. I know this product. I know this product's out there on the market. Mm. I know there is. Mm. Um, but personally, for me, you don't need to. Um, the machine. These machines mm. do not require that because no. they will give you. You've seen. You've seen what it can do mm. in terms of embossing. And there was no no water spritzing. No no things added to them. Mm. Um, that's just my personal opinion. That is not to say anybody out there that's got them. You can use them if you want to, but it's not needed. Okay. It really genuinely doesn't, you, do, you don't need to do that at all. 
Um, we have lots of questions coming in about the MIDI, so we will stack those up. We'll move on to the MIDI in just a second. Some really good questions coming in, actually. Um, but before that, I know Debbie, you wanted just to show us a little bit more with the two, didn't you? Yeah, because of the materials. And this yeah. will apply to any of your electronic die cutting machines in terms of moving it into um, your standard die cutting. Actually, I'm going to show you what you can do with a standard die because I have got some material here and I like to show this one because it can do it. The power, the performance, the precision cut um, each and every single time. Leanne will be proud of me. Uh, <laughs> so, I'm proud of you. I know, okay, but I, do you know what I was saying this? I could stick me on a stick me on a mountain and I'll shout from that mountain rooftop. A mountain rooftop? You've got a mountain in your house. Mountain top. Mountain top. Mountain top. Yeah. You shout from that top of that mountain. <laughs> I will shout about this machine till the cows come home. Mm. I mean, there's, there's a scenario, isn't there? Yeah. Mountains, cows and everything Rooftops. else. I love this machine. I'm so passionate about this machine. Um, it seriously is the best machine on the market. And I'm, I'm saying that from a place, before I started working for the company, mm -hmm. I owned that machine. The original one, still in the bedroom, can't part with it. Um, I try, I What's it doing in the bedroom? Well, it was, oh, sorry, my craft room. Oh. It was the old bedroom. Oh, so, right, so it's in the, in the old craft room. I think when you just put it in the bedroom and it was just like on your bedside table or something, you're like, oh, I love you, I can't give you away. I can't give I'm away. sorry, I'm using the two now, but I love you still. <laughs> but it's in the it's in the craft room, which is the which was the bedroom. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> but yes. But I do love this machine, and, and that's why, because it never, ever, ever lets me down. No. All these things now, sleeker, faster, quieter, toughened plates, mm. toughened plastic shame, all those kind of things, they're just the added benefits. It's just being brought up, because um, we haven't, the, that's the, the difference, the inner part of it hasn't changed. No, no. It's just the optical sensors there from the, from the full opening now, and the power there is still there, the mechanical part of it is still there, so it's just absolutely yeah. fabulous. Yes. Right. Right. Tickle's coming back. Just a second. Okay. Um, Just r rinse the tickle away. Whilst you're getting rid of the tickle, uh, I think we've covered off all the other questions, but thank you to uh, Pat and Laurel, uh, Rosalind as well. Lots of lovely messages coming in about the show, which I think is brilliant. This is what we're here for. This is why you guys love us, right? Because we bring you the great products, but then we don't kind of go, well, off you go. Good luck. Have fun with that. See if you can work it out. No, we give you all of the inspiration and ideas as well. Uh, must say hi to Anne, who's joined us from Trondheim in Norway. Uh, and also Shadaya, who says, good morning, my lord, Ben, and family. Debbie uh, got lost uh, and I lost track. Oh, sorry, she didn't get lost. It says, <laughs> says I lost track of time. Well, yeah, she didn't get lost at all. She says I lost track of time. Um, crafting an album for a colleague. Well, that's very nice. Uh, and yet still have time to watch the show plus sleep. Well, should I thank you for joining us uh, and welcome everybody else. If you have asked a question about the MIDI, don't worry, I'm not ignoring you. We're coming on to the MIDI shortly and all the questions that you sent in, uh, I will certainly ask Debbie. But back yes. to you with the, um, is it, was that leather you're doing? It's there? leather, yeah. It's me, it's me last stash of my leather, oh. which is why my dyes are getting small. <laughs> Eek it out. I'm, I'm like, I've got to find the leather supply that our lovely Laura <laughs> once got us, because she she got us loads. She got us loads for here, loads for Sarah, and I and she gave me quite a bit because yeah. I, I love doing this. This is genuine, gorgeous smelling leather, mm. and I am using a multimedia dye. Now, when it comes to a multimedia dye, you probably hear us talk about using your metal shim. It's about getting to know your machine, and it's about knowing about the pressure and sometimes if you add too many shims to it the pressure is too much you get a lot of deeper cuts and things like that and it, it's all about that balance and finding the right way to use these um, so I'm going to just show you with the multimedia die into the real leather I'm just going to put on the top now the plastic shim and then the other cutting plate onto mm. the top and run that through now it's again it's one of those if it hasn't cut out that first time it's absolutely fine you can go back to it and add something else now i don't know if you could hear that but could you hear the cutting at that point mm, i don't know if i was concentrating for it was you not no there you go no. it's cut through there I love, I love sarah's analogy okay. now hot knife through butter yes now that's a, just a simple because there's no frame look it's even beveled the edge oh yeah look at the de the detail on that is just beautiful and then of course you can do things like um and our Sarah does it all the time so hey ho why not can you boss it let's go and emboss it let's do it it's a lovely little tag it was one of the reasons why one of the lovely ladies who came to the Chesterfield store bought the Gemini because she fell in love with the, the materials that you could cut ah. she wasn't a paper crafter she was a um Sewist, so and oh, she okay. made things, and she bought it, and she bought the tag dies at the particular time. She had loads and loads of key rings, leather. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, 
seriously. And then she added things like um, uh, gilding waxes and things like that to it. It looked incredible. So that's a 3D folder, isn't it? You just put that's through there. That's a 3D folder. Oh, it's a 3D yeah. combination Boom. into the leather that's being cut out beautifully and then embossed. And that emboss will not, they will not, nothing will happen to that emboss. Come back in a year's time, that'll still look like that. It's absolutely fabulous. And then, of course, I mean, I think I might use that actually. I'm going to put that in my keychain. Oh, yeah. why not? Why not? Yeah. Absolutely. So that's using it. Now, can you see you've got your mark there? Yeah. But. Yeah. Someone straight. tell me. Straight. No warpage. And all you're going to do is flip and reverse. Yeah. And the next time I cut, I'm going to go into that side. And yeah. that's all you're going to do. I must compliment you on your um, on your uh, plates, actually. I think, And I think it's it's good that you bring your own plates in as well, because it does show that if you do... If you, if you do do... If you do do, do 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 do. If you do do the flipping <laughs> rotating, you can, you can. <laughs> Nicola, <laughs> Producer Nicola has just said a pound in the doo doo jar. Oh dear. If you do do the flipping rotating, I've said it again, um, you can keep your plates a lot straighter. So it, yes, it's good to see you kind of practice what you preach. Yes, absolutely. Now, I haven't used metal shim on my Gemini Junior yet, so I'm going to be using it now. So now when you see my new metal shim, mm -hmm. it's brand new. <laughs> it's like, because it hasn't been cut, because I've not used this one. I've used my larger one, but not in my smaller one. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to the multiple fabric line. So when you talk, see our gorgeous Becky, she always uses the Gemini G2 as well, when she's up here at her office. Multiple fabrics I think if I remember right it is eight there and I've taken again one of my multimedia dies however <clears throat> if I was to ask it to cut without the metal shim this fabric it's more fibrous it's not like leather's really quite fibrous but it's not as like there's multiples here it's not like there's one or two there's, there's eight so I want it to cut into something to give me a crisp cut and I'm going to pop it into the center there again and I'm going to bring in now the metal shim not the metal shim, Debbie. Metal shim's at the bottom. The plastic shim mm -hmm. and the other cutting plate. No time on any multimedia die are you going to use this or this. You're not bringing these in. No. You keep them out. So when it comes to the sewing side of things, and we do have different metal plates as well, I will just say, for fabric cutting. Um, I'm just using it for a demonstration purpose. There are the plates, and you'll see Becky use them. And are they called the A and B plates, if I remember rightly? The metal, the metal ones, the fabric plates. They're super toughened. And that's when you're going to use those in your machine. I don't have any with me because I don't sew. So I'm not going to be using them but I am going to show you that you can still do this if you don't so you can still run this through your machine yeah it's now going in onto the metal and the metal's cutting into the metal because there's eight pieces of fabric there I don't require and, I, and again it's down to this if I was to put the magnetic shim in these would be as warped to death because it's too much it's too much pressure this, this is all about learning your machine and learning and I mean look at that crisply cut yeah another hot knife through butter no frayed edges no fraying edges no oh I think I might have <clears throat> you please excuse the, the end that I've chopped off <laughs> <laughs> I'll chop the end off there. <laughs> Whoops, the daisy. Um, but you've got multiples. Uh, that it makes it really super quick, easy, clean cut, no fraying. And if you do love patchwork, and I've cut that end off. <laughs> <laughs> But look at that. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces cut there through cleanly um, and absolutely exquisite if you do those kind of things. So that's the multiple layers of your fabric. That's when you're going to bring in anybody that says, oh, my God, I've destroyed the plate. That is what you want it to look like. Yeah. It's taken the pressure off. That's it. And what it's not done is cut through the plate. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely fine. It's mm. taken that pressure from there. So that's why you will get it. And now it's being christened. God, love it. All you do, flip reverse exactly the same with this. You yeah. get a lot of wear out of this one as well but you don't need to use this and I've shown you that with the intricate dies now <clears throat> I am going to show you um, and it is my lovely snowflake die snowflake. Um, I, yeah I bought them years ago these um, and I absolutely love them they're from a well-known brand but it's not a multimedia die but this is fabric it's glitter fabric so you can still use a regular die but now you've got to think about what you're cutting into the platform again okay get to know your machine mm. so i'll bring in the cutting plate i think what i'm going to do is let's bring in the metal because i'm asking it to cut through fabric now i've said to you that you're going to bring in your plastic shim mm -hmm. and you're never ever going to use your magnetic shim with the exception of this 
What the? With the exception of this, because that's a thin metal die. It is not a multimedia die that's got a deeper ridge. You can see how deep that ridge is. Oh, what's the question oh, then, Nicola? Nicola's got a question. Why is that multimedia die not brown? Ah, that's a really good question, that's Nick. A good question. When we first started bringing out these dies, they were the same colour. Oh. And everybody got confused. confused. So now, this is an old die. This is me. This is my demonstration box that I've brought in, Nicola. So that's a really good question. Now all of our multimedia dies are rose coloured or copper coloured yeah, to Nick. stop the confusion between a thin metal die. If you put those in front of someone. And you'd think they were both thin metal dies. You can see the difference. Can you see the difference, Ben? Yeah? So the ridge oh, yeah. is much bigger. Yeah, you can deeper, tell that Yeah. Ones. However, to an average person who's being like cutting and things like that, I'm gonna say you're coming for a feel again. So, I thought you were. Time for that Friday feeling. Let's have a feel. And can I just say as well, metal dies oh, yeah. are not sharp. They're no. not gonna cut your fingers, kids and things like that, safe as houses. But it's deeper. You mm. can feel it, can you? Mm -hmm. That Friday feeling they're going. That was another edition of That Friday Feeling on Crafters TV. I'm loving this new feature. <laughs> hey, you got to promise you want to do it with me. Only. We're betrothed to each other we are. in the world of TV. Yeah. So you're not gonna you're not gonna do it with anybody else. Look at Brent, look at it as then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm. Back to this. Thin metal dye fabric. But I don't, I need the extra shim, so I'm going to pop that into there, and then, the, and that's the only time that you would pop that metal, uh, sorry, that magnetic shim in. You need the extra shim to cut through the fabric with a regular paper craft die. So I hope you're writing the notes down, because you wouldn't do this normally with this, with a, with a mixed media die. That was a good question, Nicola, by the way. Wasn't, Can I just say, Nicola, that was a really good question. Well done, Nicola. Absolutely. Uh, again, the metal shim has accept, you know, it's taken the pressure off. But what it's allowed me to do now is cut out into glitter fabric. Oh, uh, yeah. And let me just find poke tool. <clears throat> it's allowed me to cut through cleanly through a glitter fabric. A beautiful, and I'll turn mm. it this way, snowflake and all the added detail. And it has cut through, oh yes, Nicola, I like What's that. What's it cut like? A hot knife through butter. Yeah. And I'm just going to bring this in so you can see it. Look at that. Glitter yeah. fabric, regular thin metal die, a paper craft die. So easy. Mm. And it will do it. It's all about working through and getting to know your machine mm. and the platforms and the shims. Um, but yeah, it's gorgeous that. Nicola's getting very excited, yes, so you could potentially, you know, cut through those and make your own little patches for, to adorn your clothes, apparently. Uh, James, our uh, Vision Mixer director today, has got a leather jacket on, not a leather jacket, a denim jacket on, so um, that's probably going to get stuck on there <laughs> before the end of the day. Um, are we sticking with the two for a bit, Debbie, or do, are we moving to the middle? Okay, oh, done. I've, I've basically shown you all the kind of things that you can do with your fantastic, powerful, Precision cutting, performance every single time, all the new sleeker v, 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 v <coughs> features, yeah, and the things that it's done. And I'll just repeat what we've done, just so you can see in this first hour of the show. We've done. Where's it gone? There it is. Let me bring these back in so it shows you that we've been working really hard, Ben. We've been working really hard. Very hard. hard. We've done standard uh, dies, um, just using the two cutting platforms and the plastic shim. We've mm -hmm. then moved on to intricate dies where we've shown you how to use the magnetic shim to hold your die into place to get it into the center and things like that and done the embossing detail onto there with an intricate die. We moved on to embossing. We embossed in a standard, we embossed in a 3D, we embossed using a stencil and mm -hmm. then we embossed some gorgeous textured paper like tissue paper. We then moved into the world of fabrics, leather and embossed it. Multiple fabrics, eight sheets at one time or eight pieces of cotton and then using a thin regular die to create using glitter fabric to create a really lovely uh, feature there as well so I think I've covered quite a few bits if there's any other questions please fire them away we are here for the rest of the next hour as well um, and you can ask away and I hope I've just given you a little insight into why <coughs> everybody I mean it, everybody should own a Gemini. And whether it be a junior version, because there is the junior out there, that's just a nine by six platform. 
So it's smaller, it's like the off size of your True A4. Whether you're owning the G2, whether you've got the original, I hope I've given you a little refresher course into how to use it. Any questions you ever want to ask, even if you don't ask right now and you're watching this back in the future, hi, you can DM me. <laughs> DM me. DM you. Go over to my social page, Debbie Robinson CCO, and don't forget it's Debbie with the Y. Drop me a message. Debbie Robinson CEO. CC. Oh. <laughs> I thought you said Debbie Robinson CEO. And I, so I know it's a few people getting some new job titles here, but that is really ridiculous. <laughs> CEO now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the CEO of the Gemini <laughs> machine. <laughs> that, that, that's me. Call that, that's my new title there. Uh, <laughs> anytime you want to ask a question or you get stuck, I've helped many people and I will still continue to help many people because if I could tell anybody and bring you into this studio and do a one on one with you, you would all want to go away with the Gemini mm. because I promise you, it is the most fantastic machine. I can say that because I use it day in, day out and it's never, ever, ever let me down with any die with any embossing folder I absolutely love it and I just wish I could bring you into the studio and give you that experience mm. of what a Gemini is and why you should have own one in your life it makes crafting a pleasure it's that old cliche shouldn't be hard work it should be a, an absolute joy to craft you get creative let that do the hard work for you you get creative with it great words there from Debbie Robinson CEO <laughs> Um, you, you, do you get the messages via your Facebook page then? Because for some reason, um, when I, I, don't get, I don't have that facility on my Facebook page to get messages sent in. You have that, though. I can't get the messages. I, people can message me on Instagram, but for some reason, I, don't, I can't get messages from people on my Facebook page. Yeah, I can get them on both. Can Instagram you? and Facebook, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I'll work just... with the social girls. They'll sort you out. Oh, yeah. well, there you go. I mean, not that you want to ask me a question, would you not? I mean, maybe you might do. <laughs> Should I switch that function on? Is it worth it or not really? Probably... Probably not really worth it, is it? I don't know. Anyway, that's a question for another day. Uh, with my G2, says Trisha, I don't need to use my magnetic shim. It even cuts through double cardstock. Well, there you go. And this is why you yeah. guys love the machine. If you want this, again, the detail's not up on the screen um, because it is uh, an educational show, Crafty Stash. But if you want the G2, it is available on the website alongside the other machines, which are going to come on to. Uh, we're going to move on to the MIDI. Can I just say, we've got loads of questions come through uh, when it comes to the MIDI. Uh, that simplicity without the electricity. Uh, my machine of choice. Love it. It's a great little machine. Now, would you like the questions first up, Debbie? Would you like them yeah. as we go or would Let's you like do. them at well, the end? Shall I tell you what? We'll just quickly talk about them. Yeah. Um, because, of course, now, you can hear that lovely sucker sound. I love that suckering sound. So powerful. Yeah. Um, because, obviously, this is, um, these machines are manual machines. And the platforms are different. So everything I've just taught you about the Gemini, you're going to just erase from your mind for a second. Because <laughs> the platforms are completely different. And I will talk you through mm. all the things that you can cut, emboss, um, and the platforms that you need when it comes to your um, Gemini. The difference that you've got the two sizes. This is a three by six platform. Um, still the manual. <clears throat> still, the uh, still the suctions. So the little sucker cups, they're called. Yeah. And they are powerful. Can I just show Go you on, how do powerful? It, do it, do it. So all you're going to do is you're going to stick it onto your mat, push yeah. it down, yeah. and then you're going to pick up. Mm. And I, when I say pick up, it picks up. This is one hand. Yeah. A little diddy widdy machine picks up that very heavy glass mat. Yeah. And it is a heavy glass mat. So it knows, you know that machine's not going anywhere when you mm. use it. It is the turn of an handle. It is a little opening here of three inches, because that's the size of the Gemini Mini. Yeah. You can see the new colours mm -hmm. and the new writing there. Very clear, very simple, very sleek. Very sleek. Um, but again, platform-wise, it's very simple because there's just two. And this is the same applies to the MIDI as well. This is just Gemini Mini, 3x6. Anything that you're going to run through... Shall we do it? Shall do we do it now? Let's go for it. Yeah. do it. Let's, let's do it because I've got, I've got them here. I've got, a two and a uh, I've got a 2D and a 3D. I've got some cardstock already in there. With a 2D folder, and there's lots out there in the market of a 3x6. Uh -huh. And I've just used a double-sided pearlescent cardstock into there. Um, but this is when you're using a 2D, is when you're just going to bring this plastic shim in. This is not a cutting plate, it's no. a shim. That's where you're going to pop your uh, cardstock and run it through. So you just pop it into the mouth of the machine and then simply turn it. And and again, one finger on the top. Mm -hmm. That machine is not bouncing all over the counter. Can no. I tell you, when I've had manual machines before, I've had to wrestle over the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, I have, yeah. Uh, but look at the beautiful 
embossing feature and that emboss again edge to edge technology and the deboss side as well all the way through look how gorgeous that looks Incredible. the 3d this is even easier yeah so you're not even going to entertain no. any of those folders no. You just got to pop your cardstock mm -hmm. into there. You're going to run it through your machine. This is why I use the machines because you don't have anything yeah. to remember. Got nothing to remember. 3D straight through. Yeah. And the lovely thing about the 3D as well, and, and, and this particular size, and can, in fact, this is a good one because I'm going to show you in a second. Mm. You can even put it through your MIDI. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. even go through your MIDI uh, to to release it because obviously it's still stuck to that plate. Look at that platform still mm. there. You just rock it forward and mm -hmm. move it off and it'll still sit on the top of your, your Gemini if you want. Now this is a good example of what I mean by uh, warping. <clears throat> I did trim it down. Can you see? Oh, look. look. Uh, it yeah. hasn't because I didn't trim that one mm. down. So it's created a little bit of a warp on the edges. It's yeah. not a problem. You can trim it off. However, just make sure you trim it down before you do it and then mm. you've got your 3D uh, embossing there as well. Now for die cutting, anything that can go in and fit inside this folder, yeah. this is your die cutting folder That's and it. it's got one cutting side, two cutting side, three cutting sides, four. You're going to use all, you're going to flip, you're going to rotate all the time when you are die cutting through. Just looking for a quick die, let me have a look, what have I got? <laughs> Oh, well, I'll put one of these in. Let you me just grab one of these. You put one of the side through there, can not you? You want my lovely? What more of those go through? They're, they're multimedia. Oh, uh, actually. Got the snowflake. Yeah, the snowflake. That'll yeah. go in. Thanks for that, Ben. You are welcome. Um, grab a little bit just there. Yeah. Trim that down. Because all you need to remember is, and I will tell you, all of us, all of us still use our mini. Despite oh, yeah. having the Gemini 2, we still use it. It's so quick, isn't it? It's so quick and so easy. Yeah. And you simply place it into that folder, and then you're going to bring your mini back down, and then you're just going to run it through, and that will die cut. And as long as it fits into that folder, it'll die cut through. You can still bring back through if you want to do a double cut. Yeah. However, um, it is a Gemini machine, and it has still got a lot of um, power and performance and precision cutting, and I'm just going to find... I think there's another P when it comes to the manuals as Go well. Go on then, what's that? Well, so you, what are your three? Power? Power. Precision. Pre precision. Performance. I don't yeah. know what the fourth P is. What's that? Portability. Portability. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. a good one, Ben. Mm. Actually, that's a fantastic one. The four P's when it comes to those. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Loving that one. Yeah, I don't know if that's an actual thing, but I always think about, you know, because they are portable, aren't they? Both the MIDI and the MINI. Oh, yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And now I'm just going to poke my... I can't find my release all, so I will find it in a second, Ben. Just bear with me in a minute. That's all right. Uh, oh, uh, there's so many questions coming through. I mean, we are going to be here all day with the MIDI questions. Do you know what? It's okay. Mm. That's fine. You can ask away any questions. Do you want to be asking some while I'm poking this out? I just I need can to do. grab my, um, let me find my little die cleaning brush. Do you want to ask some questions? Okay, so I'm going to have to scroll back now. You caught me off on, off on the hop. Off, Sorry. On the hop? No, it's fine. Right, so MIDI questions. Um, one second, please. Hold the line, please, caller. Hold, Hold the line, the line please, caller. Please, caller. Right, so MIDI questions. Have you lost them, Ben? Well, there's so many of them. I've I'm lost trying my to get back. Tool. I don't know what I've done with my poker tool. I had it a second ago. How can you lose a poker tool, Debbie? Do you know? What are you like? What you am I like? And the glasses aren't helping because I'm trying to move my head in various different directions. And I've managed to lose the poker tool that I had in my hand. Seriously. Oh, one here. Oh, that's got I'll take that. Oh, it's got glitter on it. Oh, though. it's fine. Yeah. Bit of sparkle. Love sparkle. a bit of sparkle. Never at anybody. I just, I must have put it down somewhere. I don't know. Uh, are you ready? ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, Susan says, I love these helpful shows. Question about the MIDI. Yep. Is extra cardstock layers the only way to pick up embossed details when die cutting with a MIDI? Woo! Ah, oh, do you know what? That's a good one. Um, you can actually, you can't. Now, I, I will just say, don't go, don't go mad. When you're doing that to pick up that extra little detail, um, probably just use a um, photocopier. Oh, yeah. Uh, Copy it to GSM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just use a, just use a thin one. Don't mm. use a very thick one. Um, so I would say yes, you can do that for those details. Mm -hmm. um, but in fact, you know what we'll do in a second. Mm -hmm. That die that I showed you at the beginning, mm -hmm. we'll run that through. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll put it through its paces. We will. While I'm just doing. Any more questions? Oh, loads. Go on, then. Helen Stewart. Yeah. So she's asking about the MIDI. So she has got a warped shim. Um, so she says, are there some are there dies that shouldn't be used in the Gemini 
midi, um, and she's wondering whether or not she's used some dyes in there, and that's the reason why her, her shims got warped. In the midi, mini, midi or the midi? midi. In the midi, midi, and it's warped. No, you will get natural warpage. It's mm. a plastic mm. shim. Mm. And the power, uh, you still get a great deal of power and pressure into there. Obviously not the same. These are not the... This is electric, this mm. is a manual, so it's not going to be the same in that term. It will off, It will still give you a brilliant... Co Anybody who owns a MIDI or a Mini will vouch for it. Mm. I vouch for it as well. Um, but yes, you will still get some warpage. The thing there you need to do is obviously the flip and rotate onto yep. all four sides. Um, and it will depend on the... Yeah, the material that you're cutting as well. It will okay. also depend on that. Um, I finally got it out. I'll oh. tell you why I've had to struggle with it, because obviously I use it for my demonstration with the material. This is a really old die. Oh. Really old dies don't have the same T-file coating that dies now do uh, have. So it's, so when I say that you've got lots of dies in your stash, yeah. I've got them. Mm. This is one of them. This dies probably... Pfft, I'm going to say about 12, 13 years old, maybe. Wow. It, it's a really old die. That's like one of the originals then, is it? It's a, it's a, a very a very old die. I, honestly, I've had it that long. I couldn't. I could tell you where it's from. And I know that Miss Sarah's got these as well. Mm. Um, there was a few of them in different sizes um, <laughs> over the years. <laughs> they vanish. Um, what? I actually used to take them down with me when I used to do the other side, the Creative Craft side. That... Um, I've lost them over the years, I have. Uh, so it doesn't matter, but it's still a great one to show. So it didn't come out as easy, but it's come out. And if we can just hold that up for you so you can see it. As, oh, thank you. Sorry, James. Sorry, James. It's still cut there beautifully. It just took a little bit of time to get that out because that's not a T-far coated dye like they are these days. Right, fire away with some more. More. Um, uh, well, hang on a second there, Nicola. You can't push the if push in front of the queue where Nicola's got a question, but she, you have to wait a second. <laughs> um, so a few questions, I can kind of like bundle a couple together here. Um, dies not to use in the MIDI or the MIDI, and I know this is a bit of a bone of contention sometimes, but let's talk multimedia dies. Oh. Are, um, multimedia dies, no in the MIDI, right? No in the MIDI, mm. or the Mini, or both? Mm. Or both. So a multimedia die, I would personally, depending on the material, cut it, put it through your electronic die right. cutting machines. I've got some cardstock, so do you know what? Let's show you. I'm just going to pop that in there. And now I've moved to the MIDI, so I've gone bigger. So Nine this is multimedia? Six. This is multimedia. Can you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I, this is why I wanted to show you. you. You have to be really careful. If you're forcing, can you see this here? Yeah. Sorry, sorry, I'm just going to move it there just for a second, James. I do apologise. I'll put it back in a second. But, but if you force that through, mm. there's a question there that you may damage. Yeah. This damage this or damage this so just be mindful of that um, and you can see it started to cut it which it has done but this is a multimedia die multimedia cuts through several layers mm. not one layer so you've got to be really mindful when you're using them um, and I know it is a bone of contention because I know that there's mixed mixed reviews I have done them before where I've put them in but I have a um, I, when I say I have a separate folder I have a separate folder and I'll tell you why it's going through now because I don't know if you've noticed the position that I put it through I've changed the position of where I put my die okay now you will get some resistance and that's why I would personally prefer to run one of these multimedia dies in a electronic die cutting machine yeah and the reason being as well is yes it's cut it out but what it's also done is mm. given me a little bit just i'm not just a little bit but it's given me a little bit of warpage there and that's why i would always have and i do have because i have used these before but i have one of these folders for these dies only and that's what i'm demonstrating so yes they will cut through but you won't use them with materials, and if I've got a bit of leather, I could show you that, because it's it's a little bit trickier to do. It's a manual machine. It's still powerful. And when I say powerful, it is still things like, let's go back to that die. We can still run things like this through. Lots of your dies will fit through there as well. So I'm going to find some cardstock, Ben, and I'll just run that through and show you uh, as well. So I'm just going to go and okay. drop over and grab some, uh, so I want uh, a minute. I hate to say as well, for those of you sort of asking about the, um, the warpage again on things like your folder and your shim with your MIDI, it, 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 they are the consumables, so it's the same with like your plates in your electronic machines. You, th th it will happen naturally, but you know, um, 
it's something that, that will happen over time uh, if you can do the rotating with them like with the folder for example it's like you were showing us earlier debbie with the folder in the mini and the midi yeah. if you can flip it and also it's like you were literally doing that with it weren't you like, like just yeah. flipping it around and changing flip flip and flipping, change yeah, it around change. yes absolutely and the other thing as well is please remember it's an inch um that's that's the right word an inch isn't inch, it yeah. On, yeah thank yeah. you on the yeah. folder um so when you are placing your dies in there please be mindful where you put it mm. if you put it right up to the very top you are going to really struggle to get that through the machine does it matter if you go hinge first or open end first Hinge first is the better way right. to do it because um the pressure if you're going in with the um open side that's a good question that if you're going with the open side that there is the danger is that that she could split that on the other way coming out so always go inch first into the machine offer that in first yeah um, and then you can see the die cut and if I just show you so I've just run that die through again mm. and I'm sorry James I do apologize my angles are all dodgy today I'm ever so sorry um, thank you uh, but if I just pull that out and I'm just gonna be careful in pulling it out again this is a very old die it doesn't have the same kind of coating that um, these regular dies do right now uh, however and again I can't find die cleaning brush um, ben, I don't you know where it is. Tool, apparently. Oh, so I've got a pokey tool, oh. but I can't find the dye cleaning brush. It's, oh. it's vanished out of the studio. I don't Just know what's happened to it. Your pokey tool, um, Renny was saying she saw it fall live onto the floor. What? Your pokey tool f rolled off the side and fell live onto the floor. My proper paper tool. Put, 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 no, you lost your original pokey tool in the show, didn't oh, you? Oh, bless her, yes. She said she saw it. The it's floor. there. I can see it. Oh. I'm Who getting saw it. that? Rene. Rene, thank you. you I go. did think it was rather strange. Yeah. I thought, where's it gone? Rene, you have got very good eyes to have been seeing that. And all I'm going to say is thank you very much, my darling, because I would have been... It's one of those questions what start puzzling you. Yeah. Where did it go? They have a habit of doing that, don't they? Those they do. Tools. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I'm mm. just going to move this across. I'm so sorry, we've been, we've been focusing on the machines. I've just realised the time. And it's flown, isn't it? I, I, got... do, I do apologise to anybody... But well, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping you're enjoying the, it, and I'm the hoping... Comments are, I'm seeing the lovely comments coming through. We, as I say, we did like a, a, a lot of scoring on Wednesday with Craig, so I think, you know, if you do want to see anything scoring-wise, let us know, but uh, I feel like we're going to probably take the last half hour from this, certainly with the questions coming through as well. We've got lots more to ask, so... Well, this is the point of the Crafty Stash. I yeah. said this. Um, I think it's really refreshing that we've gone in with a different kind of uh, theme um, with these Crafty, sh mm. uh, crafty Stash shows. Get that the right way around and say it slowly, Debbie. Um, but yes, I'm loving it because it's the opportunity what we don't often get um, and it's not focusing about making something. I did say at the beginning of the day, don't expect to be doing a demo of the day no. today because it's not going to be happening. It's all about techniques. It's all about um, talking about things, showing you how to use them, mm. things that you've got. And the Gemini is probably the one of the biggest purchases you've made. And I know that there's some people out there that use it and use it really well and will vouch for me when I say the same thing, saying how fantastic it is. But there's still some people out there that get puzzled by it, that yeah. still have troubleshooting problems with it. And it's because we don't focus on it when we're talking, when we're doing the shows. We talk about it, but we don't show it. Mm. So it's nice to concentrate and do a full... <laughs> by the time I finish, the full two hours on yeah. the um, on the Gemini, uh, and then the last ones I'm just going to poke out there because I'm a little bit of a stickler, but it's just to show you that this has gone through that same die, mm. but gone through the manual machine. All those cutting points, it hasn't failed one. It shows you the power and the precision yeah. and the performance. With the added portability. That's it. Love the extra fourth P there. Um, it gives you that portability because it isn't relying on re electric. It's one of those machines that if you have got a partner and you've got a craft room but it's mm. in your bedroom or something like that. And I know I talk about bedrooms again. I do apologise. Sorry. But there are people who craft in the bedrooms and no. they need a quiet <laughs> spot. Yeah. And a machine, an electronic cutting machine, it's noisy. Yeah. yeah. It's even this even this new one, there's still noise attached to it. Not as not as not as noisy as before. No. But yeah, um so it's nice to have the option of having an you know, a manual one to an electronic one. Of course. Because of that quietness. But doesn't let you down when it mm. comes to this when it comes to the die cutting ability this is still probably one of the most intricate dies i know and it seriously i could have got you a brush in the time you've been chatting i know you could have yeah you could have found me one because this just needed that extra little push out um i, sh I sh what i should have done is while it was still in the die i should have given it a good old tap and it would have come out but it's fine because what it's done and i think i've got them all out 
is just to show you, and if I try to trim that down, I'm just going to do it with my scissors very quickly. But it's cut beautifully and just as good as the electronic. But mm -hmm. the added difference here is that I haven't been able to run it through with an embossing mat. There is no embossing mats with this machine um, because it doesn't need it. Um, it's a manual. It would be slightly different. It wouldn't work the same way. But I can still see the slight embossed detail on there. But to be fair, if it's going to give me a cut like that, Ben, uh, from an <laughs> coming from an electronic. In fact, where's that electronic one gone? <laughs> oh yeah, compare and contrast. There you go. It's cut them both. It's cut them both. It's cut them both beautifully, which is why I took a little bit of time getting all extra little bits out. So it's still a very powerful machine. But the difference there is, of course, this is a platform. It's a plastic shim. And a plastic shim, you will get warpage. But yeah. just remember, four sides. And it doesn't affect the cuts, even though it's warped a little bit it doesn't affect the cut but i would just say just make sure now i know that i'm not going to use this side because don't forget on this side i've had the multimedia die that yeah. I, I personally wouldn't use in one um but you saw it did it <laughs> it did do it you just angle it a bit further down you don't put it near the end just put it near the end it'll snap i can promise you um i can't believe it's half past four um, i know question so Beverly's asking about the shim. So the shim that you get with the MIDI folder is the same as the shim that you will get with your MIDI. We will have another little yes, break it in is. a minute. Yeah. So it's exactly so, the same. So the shim, when do we use that again? Just remind yes. us. Yes, so I will remind you. So for a 2D regular embossing folder, so 5x7s, anything from a small right up to 5x7. Um, uh, so this is six by nine. Six by sixes will go on there as well. Um, you're going to use for a regular embossing folder the same way that I did with the MIDI that you saw me do with the MIDI. You use the, the MIDI with the embossing folder. You would do the same with the regular. In fact, I have the regular. I have some cardstock. She says. She says. I have plenty of cardstock. Let's just show you. I would normally cut this down, guys. So please don't don't judge me on this one. Uh, that I would cut this down, but just to show you again, the platform regular embossing folder, the purple shim. We haven't changed this one yet. Um, I, I, are we are we changing this one? I'm, I'm not really sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure because you've got one, haven't you? You jammy devil. What do you mean? You've got a you've got a raspberry one. Well, it's, it's one of a kind. I know. Mine mine says Ben Mosby's Gemini MIDI, and it says simplicity without electricity on it. I love it. I can't believe you've got that. I think that's fantastic, yeah. Leanne. A yeah. real, that's I a real so, treat. So happy with that. Uh, but the embossing detail, and obviously it was a bigger cast, but it's still embossed. And 3D, and I've got one of the uh, large macro embossing folders here. A 3D one works exactly the same way as I showed you with a mini you don't use anything. It's going straight into the mouth of the machine. So I'm just going to pop that into the mouth of the machine. Mm -hmm. Oops, Debbie. Into the middle. And then just run that through. It's still got those powerful suckers on the bottom, but it's then got that oh, lovely embossed word. detail as well. And that yeah. just shows you how fabulous that is. Okay? So I hope that helps yeah. with the platforms and helping you with the Mini, the MIDI, the G2. Um, <sighs> Well, Any more questions? There's tons. I feel. Um, oh, okay. Ask a question. Okay, Go so on, let, we got Nick. What's your question, Nicola? Nicola says she has a two-part question. Her MIDI folder has split at the hinge. What am I doing wrong? What's she doing wrong? And can she still? Oh, use the two bits together rather yes. than as a folder. Yes, she can. Yeah. Yeah, still can. Mm. Um, Bit of parcel tape. Yeah. Just take it over electric. And electric it would have split because well because it's maybe been used a lot or because you've put too much through it. And too close to the hinge. Right. And that's where you'll get the split from the hinge. If you've put your die up ah, near the top. So push it back. This is not the, the same no. as electronic, where we tell you you can put it anywhere on your plate. You've got to think about the plastic hinge. In the centre, it's held together with two. One, two, there, in the centre. I don't know if you can see that. But two plastic hinges holding the two strong folders together do not put your die at the top because it's pressure when it goes through the machine in the mouth of the machine it's the extra pressure and it will split those plastic shims but yes you can still use it i promise you you can still use it because i didn't practice what i preached 
I split mine, I was like, oh, for goodness sake, Debbie. Uh, but I just taped it over with um, a little bit of tape. So yeah, that's a good question. Very good question, but you can still use it. However, these aren't that expensive. They're quite inexpensive. Um, so I can hear Nicola. She don't like parting my money, that's no. the problem. But Nicola, just, you can still use it, absolutely. But just bear in mind where you're putting your dies to make sure it's not right at the very top where the hinge is. Oh, goodness. Uh, love it. You answered all my mini questions, says Betsy through Black. We've got some more questions to come in. I just kind of want to scan through the questions that I've got just so that I can kind of calculate in my mind what we have and haven't answered. Uh, so we will have a short break. Uh, Manny says, I've been waiting for this type of session. It's been great. I've learned so much, says Vanessa Fuentes, about the machines. Thank you, Debbie and Ben. Uh, I have them all, says Kathy, and I love them all. Uh, I have them all. I have, uh, and they all have their own use. Uh, Susan says, even though my uh, MIDI and mini plates are banana shaped, they still work fine. Turn and flip too, that's the thing. Even There will come a point when they won't, but you can use them still, even if they are bananaed. Uh, Susan says, thank you, Debbie. I've used yesterday and today card so it all works okay. Brilliant shows this week, thank you. Uh, and Ben and Debbie says, Helen, thank you for answering my question. We're gonna have a short break. Anything that you've seen on the show will be in stock on the website, so you can pick it up if you wanna buy a two, if you wanna buy a MIDI, if you wanna buy any of the scoreboards. Uh, it's all there, shop the show, shop the day. Uh, we will um, put our heads together. Uh, come up with some more ideas for you and also answer some more questions after we've had a short break. We'll be back in about mm, four minutes. Many of our viewers bring up time and time again and that's our wax seal seal gate. Thinking Joe might not work as well because I put too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> oh I've forgotten to put me um <laughs> my thing in place. <laughs> because I have a way of words, but I think that doesn't engage with that and can come out all wrong. Water. That, that wasn't the one you king. just washed your brush in, was it? Sorry. Yes. It doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it wasn't, was it? It was. Are you kidding? I'm going to have to say, it's a slip of the tongue. I'm going to say it's maybe to do with my Scottish accent. I'm maybe going to say it's because of Mr. Uh, ben Mosby. He is, well, yeah, he doesn't help matters. Fire Fireman 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 um, I've made pots that have exploded when I fired them. I've done zips in inside out. It happens to everybody. We've all spilt our glitter all over our project or knocked the water over. You are. I've just noticed I've got my dress on inside out. <laughs> <laughs> so I was messing about doing some backgrounds with the sparkling, took the lid off it and managed to catch the pot somehow and the whole thing came towards me, down my front, across my lap, onto the floor. I went to reach for the water and, you know, do the, the, the tapping with the, the, and so there was less tapping and more sort of a tsunami. Um, <laughs> I've got some... <gasps> Hi, I'm Ben from Crafters TV. As you may know, we've just launched an amazing new website. Our new home of Papercraft to house all of your crafty needs. And as we've had a bit of a makeover, I'm here today to help you add those crafty goodies to your basket and check out. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get started. First, head on over to the Crafters Companion homepage. Select the correct geographical location at the top of the page. Next, log into your My Crafters account. Explore the site and products using the navigation bar at the top of the screen. When you find the product you want, add to your basket by clicking the Add to Basket button. You'll then have the option to view your basket or continue shopping. If you want to check out, click View Your Basket. Here you can see the list of items you've added along with the order summary on the right hand side of the screen. This is also where you'll see your loyalty discount. And just remember, the price you're seeing at this stage is excluding any delivery charges. This will also be your opportunity to add any discount codes you may have. Simply type in the code, hit apply, and if your code is valid, you should see the correct amount of discount deducted from your order total. Once you're happy to go ahead with your order, click the proceed to checkout button in the summary box on the right hand side of your screen. If you want to use ShopPay, PayPal or Google Pay, you can select the relevant option under Express Checkout 
and you'll be given instructions on how to check out. If you have a gift card, you can enter the code on the right hand side of the screen and press apply. You should see the correct amount of discount deducted from your total. If you'd like to pay by card, the details linked to your account should appear in the relevant fields. If these aren't showing, you'll need to fill out the correct details. When you've entered your payment information, click the continue to shipping button at the bottom of the screen. Select your preferred shipping option, click continue to payment. Here, you can enter your card details or select shop pay, PayPal or ClearPay. Next, make sure the correct billing address is entered under the billing address section, or if this is the same as your shipping address, then you'll have the option to select it. Click pay now, and that's it. You'll be taken to a thank you page with an order number, and you'll also receive a confirmation email with the details of your crafty purchase, which will be on its way to you very soon. Welcome, thank you, Digital Ben. It's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Uh, quick one here. Oh, I almost forgotten about this. Debbie, it's your birthday this weekend. Oh, yes, it is. Yes. Uh, and Stephanie says, I want to wish you a very happy birthday. Aww. Um, she says, my daughter-in-law turns 40 on Sunday. Uh, Saturday night, they've hired a chef to come in and serve a seven-course meal to them. Oh, my God. And 20 very close friends. We've got the grandchildren overnight, but plan to work on birthday cards they can give their mother in the morning on the Sunday. Aww. I hope you're celebrating. Have you got a chef coming in with a seven-course? That's what I was just going to say. Stephanie, can I come over, please? Because um, I'm planning on going out. Uh, well, I am told, because my mum and my sister are away at the moment. They've been in Fudge Venture, or, oh, well, since Monday. Went for a short break, um, but I want to go out for breakfast. Have a breakfast. Uh, yeah, but there's a really nice pub where I live, and I want to go there because I've seen the I've seen the breakfast menu, and they're open on a Sunday. So I thought I'm going out for my breakfast on Sunday, even if I go by myself. Uh, but I will be spending the day with me grandkiddies and me daughter and a partner, and also uh, my mum, and hopefully my sisters and my nieces as well. But it's my nieces son's first birthday the day before and um, so i'm not sure because they've got plans but we're going out for a meal tomorrow night for his birthday and then i'm going out for me not only me breakfast but for me tea as well <laughs> <Looming> <laughs> marvelous going, going out, out for it all <laughs> i love that i know well it's all it's the special day i see i'm a big believer in i know christmas is christmas but for me the most special day of the year is your birth date. Mm. It's the day you were born, and it's just, and I've always gone OTT at birthdays for my kids. I've always made a big effort, um, and I believe because I believe it's a special day, so everybody should get spoiled on the birthday. Hey, and Debbie Robinson, CEO, should <laughs> get spoiled. <laughs> Uh, this show is fantastic, says Laura, so I'm going to have to go back and follow along to learn. Yeah, you can always come back and watch the show whenever. Uh, Cindy Funk says, good day all. Uh, great show, Debbie and Ben. I love learning about the plate combinations. Thank you. From Lake of the Ozarks, Missouri. Right, a couple of quick fires, Debbie, and then um, yeah. I know a few people want to see a cut and emboss folder through the MIDI. So Absolutely. the quick fires are... Is it, says Stephanie, is it a good idea to not place your dies in the same spot on your plate? So you, as much as you flip and rotate, is it good to move your dies around? That is a fantastic question. And you know what? Especially if you're using a manual machine, like your MIDI or your Mini, mm -hmm. yes, move them around. So you've got a nice platform, especially with a MIDI, it's a 9 by 6 platform. Move them around so that all the areas and all the surface areas of the plastic shim get covered. It gives you longevity. If you keep putting the same die in the same yeah. place, it'll warp and warp and warp and warp because you're adding the pressure in the same area the whole time. You're not giving the plates a fair chance, so move them around. That applies to your electronic machines. Yeah. And I'm just gonna, I was just looking for my machine. I don't know if I'm in plates now, Ben. I mean, I put those down now as well. But the same applies there. Move them around so you're not keep hitting every single time you put your die, you know, your mm. die. If you're putting it in the same place, it's going to take a hit. And then you're going to see a bit of warpage perhaps there. But what you're not going to see is. It, it's a cutting plate, yeah, it's a cutting yeah. platform. Use the whole sides and flip and rotate. And more importantly, especially in these, use all four sides. By that I mean, you saw me cut um, a 
multimedia die into this side. I then flipped it over and cut the die into that side. So if I was going to come again now, I wouldn't go into those. I'd no. go into this side. So this means I put my cardstock down over the top, close that up and run that through. And then the next time I would use it, I would then turn it over and exactly the same into there turn it through and run it through and then just keep doing that every single time and because I've done those two sides I would then go back to this one put that through run it through the machine and then and so and that's all I want you to remember and I promise you and again have it in different areas remember though not at the very top put no. it at the very top you're potentially going to damage those two hinges. So I hope that helps. Absolutely. Uh, quick question on the <coughs> plates for your Gemini. Uh, Sandra <coughs> says, original, oh, sorry, question. I have the original Gemini. Uh, will the new Gemini plastic shims work in the original? Absolutely. So you can, you can use your original Gemini plates in the Gemini 2 and the Gemini 2 plates in your Gemini. And yeah, yeah you can flip those around. Absolutely, you can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, can you, says Beth, use a permanent marker on the back of the die to highlight the release hole? Yes. Yep. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because um, nine times out of ten, you can't find it. You forget where it is. So yeah, put a little mark on there. Do what makes it easy for you, so you know where it is. Uh, Candy says Debbie had a great idea. Just tape it. It's amazing what duct tape can do. That's if your folder splits. A few of you said your folders are split, but of course you can you can tape um if, if that's the the problem that you've got. Uh, Tess says I've been using the same plates in my MIDI and Mini for over a year, and they really hold up. The yeah. flipping, it's the rotating. Uh, Debbie, says Christy Mahoney, is a plethora of information. Yes, not only is she the CEO of Craft, uh, she is also <laughs> the plethora of information. Um, yes, she's CEO <laughs> POI, plethora of information. CEO POI is, uh, is our Debbie. <laughs> uh, Mary Beth Dawes says, this has been a great show. Uh, this Craft Stash format uh, this week has been really helpful. Thanks for sharing these. Um, and Let's have a look at this next little demo because I think we're rapidly running out of time here. Midi Gemini, uh, Gemini, Gemini, <laughs> <laughs> Midi, the Gemini Midi Demi. Uh, a few people have been asking about cut and emboss folders. Can we use a cut and emboss folder in the Midi? Yes, you can. Right. Yes, you absolutely can. I'll talk about the platforms. I know where I've put my plates now. I've seen them over there. Um, I'll talk about the uh, plate combination for a cut and emboss folder. Could you just? Pass me my little mini plates that are over there, please, then. Mini. Uh, but I'm going to show you that it will work in your MIDI. Now, a cut and emboss folder is embossing folder. What do you want? With my mini. My, my MIDI, sorry. Oh, my Gemini say, Junior. Gemini Junior. Oh, my God, I'm getting so confused with all my plates. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because I'll talk about the combination for this in a second. But yes. I am going to show you that it will work through the MIDI. Now, it has got embossing, but it's also got metal dies in there. Now, I know what you're going to think, because I've said to you all along, any metal die <laughs> will go into there. And you're probably thinking, well, that's got metal die, so that's going to go into there. No, it is not. It is an embossing folder. Ultimately, it's an embossing folder with a little bit of metal in there. Yeah. So to emboss, you are not going to place it into your cutting folder. Please don't do that. You'll soon realise that it won't go through and you'll damage your plate and everything else and you'll probably damage your cutting emboss folder. Okay. So you're just going to place, and I've gone with a satin card again. Now I've got a very old one here again. You might recognise it, those who have been with it a long time. Uh, but we do do regularly. Oh, I've done it now. Put a pound in the jar. Oh, dear me. Do do. Yes. We have done them a long time. <laughs> so you're going to pop the um, cardstock of your choice into your folder. All you'll remember is that when you're doing a cutting emboss, it's the metal that cuts into the cardstock. So your chosen cardstock, it cuts in. So just remember that when you're using this. And again, that's because I've done it myself many a time, I've forgotten that. Yeah. Now, now, what you're going to do is you're going to treat it as a regular standard embossing folder. So you're going to bring in your purple shim or on your raspberry coloured one, it's a clear one now. So that's all you're going to do. And you're going to treat it as you would do with an embossing folder. Put it into the mouth of a machine and then you're going to use it and go through. And you can, if you want, go back in again. But I'll just show you for the purposes of this one. Um, and I'm just going to move it out of the way. When you take that out, oops, 
You'll, you'll forgive me on this one because I've uh, <clears throat> put it a bit too close to the button. Oh, okay. However, it right. doesn't matter because mm. I've got another one here at the side. Um, this is when you're going to take out all the... What have I done with me? There it is, the little pokey tool. Now, this is when you're going to release it. Now, depending on your cardstock, can you see I'm having to just slightly take that out a little bit more than I would normally? Um, but all the areas that the cutting emboss uh, has done has worked really beautifully. Mm. And that just shows you that your cutting emboss folders will go through your midi and look at the gorgeous detail of That's the embossing so cool. and the die cutting. Yeah. However, it is going and to be treated like a regular embossing folder. And I think there's another little piece at the very top there. If I remember rightly, yeah, that's that design. Yeah, 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 there we go. And there you are. It just works beautifully into there. So again, it's all about knowing and doing your platforms correctly. And that's how you would do it in a midi. If you were doing a cutting emboss, mm -hmm. and this is why I should fetch these over for me, Ben. Oh, yes, and you're electronic. Electronic. Mm. And the difference there, you put your cardstock into there and you're going to treat it as a regular standard embossing folder and you're going to pop those in like that. Now, the only exception that I do, and you've probably seen me do it quite a few times, is I'll add another shim in if I want a bit of extra oomph, and I'll put the metal shim in and sandwich it in there. But try it without first and pop it in. In fact, we're still switched on, aren't we? I've still got some cardstock. Shall we do it? Do Let's it. Let's do it. I've still got a bit of time, so let me bring in. I've got a nice piece of coloured cardstock here. Let's see if I've got one right size. Perfect. Ooh. Thank you. I've got a nice little bit of an inky in. background. Yeah. Little bit of an inky background into there. Um, and I'm just going to enclose that in. This time, try and remember, Debbie, not to put it too far down to the bottom. Um, and run that through as it would be standard treated like an embossing folder, a regular embossing folder, and run that through there. The times that you'll see me sometimes when I do a cutting emboss folder is I'll add a metal shim into there. Um, but to be fair, Ben, <clears throat> the detail and the die cut elements is still the same. So it's, it's, I suppose it depends on the look that you want to go for. Can yeah. you see it's just that little bit just prizing that out? So that's why I would, me personally, why I do use a metal shim um, to add that. And do you know what? I've got another piece of this underneath. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what I mean. And we'll compare the two. And remember, there's, there's other little areas in this. I can, I, it's one of the old cutting emboss folders that we brought out. Was it before your time, Ben? Have you seen was. these before? Yeah, no, I haven't yeah. seen this before. It's because I have a... Well, when I go out demonstrating uh, around places, I have my own uh, Gemini box. I've had it for a long time, since I first started with the demonstrating training. Um, and so I have older ones in there, mm. as well as new ones. In fact, I can see there's lots of other little features. I, I knew there were other little features in there. I just can't remember. I'm thinking, I'm sure I am. Poked all those little pieces out. There we go. And then I've got another sheet here because I'm going to show you <clears throat> why I personally do a cutting emboss folder. And I'm popping this in. I gave it a little tap, get rid of all my extra excess bits. And I'm going to pop that in. And then I'm going to use the metal shim now and pop yeah. the metal shim over the top, just sandwiching it in there. Mm -hmm. You don't need the embossing mat. Can I just stress that? You do not need the embossing mat with an embossing folder. Just remember that. And that, write little notes down. You don't need the embossing mat with an embossing folder. Yeah. No. Because it's, it's, uh, that's why people get confused, mm. because it, we automatically think that that's what Different they need. Yeast, because you're embossing with the dye. Yeah. Yeah, mm. it's daft, isn't it? But we just, it's just about getting used to used to things. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does, yeah. Are there so, any more questions coming? There's one more question which we can tackle in a minute. There's loads of lovely comments coming through. Uh, Betsy, thank you for yours. She says, I laugh every time y'all say doo doo. Doo doo. <laughs> doo doo. Ah, oh, it's another pound in the jar. Um, it's another three pound in the jar, apparently, because I've said it quite a few times. Uh, thi <laughs> this, says Betsy, has been one of the best shows with so much info. Thank you, Aww. Debbie. Um, oh, thank you, because I know I was conscious that I was going to do lots of other things as well, but... Um, I did, when, when we got asked the question, when we were, the star had come to us all and said, yeah. what would you like to do? Well, Craig just screamed foil press. We knew he would do. <laughs> we, we knew he would do. <laughs> hey, foil press, hey! That's what he said. <laughs> uh, like Jan that. was straight away with the mixed media. She was like straight in with the mixed media. Mm. Um, and I, I genuinely, I just went, oh my God, can I have the Gemini? And she said, is there anything else you want on there? And I was like, yeah, but can I, can I do the Gemini machines? Well, as the CEO of Craft, I'm not surprised you got what you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
Because um, I'm so passionate about this machine, mm -hmm. and I, I know all the other guys are as well, but I think it's because um, I've had many experiences with machines in the past, and this for me has been a game changer, a complete game changer uh, for me, and it's why I love the machine so, so much, because you can see just how fabulous that is. That's the difference with, um, with using the metal shimming. It gives you a little bit more of an in-depth um, embossed yeah. detail. It's a little tiny bit flat. It's still embossed, but it's just a tiny little bit flatter. Um, and I've not poked out all my other little bits there because um, <clears throat> I realised it's got all that gorgeous detail. And mm. I haven't got my brush. Still haven't got my brush pen. So I've realised now that it's all these in here as well that still need to well, be poked out. You can keep poking. Uh, we've Thank got um, one more question. A few comments. I'll just read these and I'll ask the question. Um, some lovely comments for Debbie's birthday, so I'll read these. Uh, I'm at Debbie, says Deborah Spencer. Birthdays are your special day, so I go all out also, more than any other day of celebrating, uh, Christmas, Mother's Day, etc. And Laura O'Donnell says, Happy birthday, Debbie. May it be the best ever year for you. I wish I was over your way to treat you to a, a birthday mimosa uh, to go along with your birthday breakfast, but I'll Ooh. have one in your honour. Oh, thank you. What's a mimosa? Oh, Nicola's right in there. Orange juice and what? I don't know. So it is an alcoholic drink. Orange juice and Prosecco, Nicola's saying. I Probably think is. it's an... Uh, um, isn't that Buck's yeah, Fizz? Yeah, I, th I think it's an alcoholic drink. That's Buck's Fizz, isn't it? Orange, orange juice, juice and... and orange juice and champagne. Oh. Uh, sorry, on, orange juice and champagne is a Buck's Fizz. Yeah. Ah. Oh, a mimosa. A mimosa is what? Champagne and orange juice. Ah. Well, oh, what's Buck's, Buck's Fizz, then? here. Buck's Fizz. Oh, they're very similar cocktails, oh, apparently. Oh, I didn't yeah. think. I was thinking then, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so what... Oh, here we go. So what we would call a Buck's Fizz is a mimosa to the US. Ah! Let me see. So when Buck's Fizz go over to the US, do they call themselves mimosa? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> um, quick question, and it will be quick because we're nearly out of time. Um, acetate. Yes. Zoe Carver. Hello, Zoe. Says... Any tips on how to cut acetate in the MIDI? Oh, uh, she's found it marks the plate but doesn't go through the acetate. Yes. Uh. So again, that's the material, and I'm going to be I'm, I'll be totally transparent with you. I'm going to tell you as it is. Any acetate, put it through your electronic die cutting machine and use mm. your metal shim. Mm. It's a bit similar to like the leather that need. Oh well, I said the leather, the multiple layers of fabric. It needs a little bit of that metal onto metal to give you a crisp, clean cut. So when you're using an acetate. I'm going to be straightforward and tell you, it's going, to, it's going to be a little bit tougher to go through there. You're probably going to have to run it through three, four times to get that precise cut. It is a powerful machine, it really is, but it's the material that you use. You have to think and tweak a little bit differently. So for me, I would always use the um, acetate into an electronic die cutting machine mm. and use your metal shim to cut into it. Does that make sense? Right, because yes. Tessa, she's tried it in the G2 and she can't get the shim combination right in the, in the Gemini, in the electronic machine. Let me see if I can find some acetate. Just give me a second. I know yeah. we've got a few minutes left. Let me see if All I can right. find some acetate. Uh, whilst you're doing I'll that, I'll read some comments. Yeah. I'll cover. Uh, Luana Lewis says, oh, new. Luana says, good morning, Ben, Debbie and the team. Uh, ben, you know how to say it right. I've watched you guys for a couple of years, uh, but never had the courage to text in. Well, thank you so much, Lauren, and I've just seen your second comment here. Uh, ben, I'll read this out. I'll take this, I'll take this all day, every day. Ben, I have to say that you are devilishly handsome. Ooh! Look at you! Uh, and Deb... What? Debbie... Well, I don't understand the next question, the next bit. Debbie, don't worry about the denture issue. I deal with it all the time. Denture? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it says. <laughs> Oh, is that because you have got your teeth in? She, I think those are her actual, they're her actual teeth. It's just, uh, it's just the saying. <laughs> I, I can't really get them out. Nah, yeah. Oh dear. Thanks for sending that one in, though, uh, Loana, and thank you. Thank you for messaging. I hope. Listen, I hope we are um, approachable enough for you guys not to think, oh, I can't, I can't message in, they're too scary. Yeah, always sending messages. I really appreciate that, uh, Loana. Thank you. And anyone else who's never messaged before, 
please um, say hello, ask a question. I mean, not now because we're running out of time. Uh, but yeah, never feel worried about asking or saying hello because we love it when you do. Uh, you've got about two minutes, not even that. Is, yeah. is that enough time? So I'm just going to very quickly explain. I've, I've, I've found some acetate. It's not the heavyweight um, acetate. Heavyweight acetate, again, think about the pressure. So I've put a couple of sheets in here. Um, cutting plate. Metal shim, the metal into the into the um, more, it's a it's a different kind of a material to our cardstock. So it's a micron, it's not a GSM. So it needs something a little bit more uh, to go through. And running it through with a plastic shim on the top, and then the other cutting plate onto the top of that as well. The difference there is, if it's a regular die, then you'll put the ma the magnetic shim in the top. Wait, I've just done that. But I I've got um the only thing I could find really quickly was my multimedia die. Um, so. So I've cut it through with the multimedia die so and that's cut through a couple of layers again that's took the hit that's absolutely fine I probably I'm not gonna lie I probably could have got away with about four sheets of that mm. because this is not the same as a this is a, a lighter weight micron but as cut through it's very difficult to see <laughs> let me see <laughs> if I can get it on there I don't know if you can see it that little bit better yeah but it's cut through there quite beautifully as well so sorry James it's a very tricky one when it comes to acetate Fantastic. but it just shows you that you can cut through there if that would have been a regular die, I would have gone in with the with the regular die on top of the acetate, the plastic shim, and then the magnetic shim onto the top, mm. and then run that through and the combination. And again, you would just put that through there yeah. to cut through your acetate. Oh, what a show! We're done. We're done. Bless you. Uh, this has been a very informative week, says Barbara. Thank you and thanks, Debbie. Says Pam Riley for the tips about taking out the magnetic shim to prevent the tape marking the coated cards. This is really helpful, as I found this frustrating, but not any more uh, what a great show thank you hopefully we answered your question if we didn't apologies but i feel like we've covered a lot in the last two hours should we do another show in an hour debbie what do you reckon maybe a bit of color me happy yes yes i'll do a few techniques i promised hannah we'll do reverse stamping i promised people that we're going to do stamping with tricolors and with the glitter sparkles as well tune in lots more of tips and techniques that i'll share with you and a little bit of imparted knowledge for you all. That's it. Join us all, me, Devilishly Handsome, and her, the CEO of Craft. We'll see you in an hour. Oh! <laughs> <laughs>